all of you are requested to kindly uh, mute yourself only dr amit banerjee sir will unmute and all others will mute hello everyone very good morning myself dr amit banerji on the behalf of shampur siddheshwari mahavidyalay on the behalf of physical education foundation of india west bengal chapter i welcome sri kalipado mondol mla and president of the governing body shampur siddheshwari mahavidyalay principal Dr. Santanu Kumar Bose, IQAC coordinator of Shampur Siddheshwari Mahavidyalay, Dr. Rajasri Mukherjee, chief guest Dr. A.N. De, guest of honor Dr. Asim Kumar Bose, guest of honor Dr. George Abraham, guest of honor Professor Dr. M.K. Singh, special guest Dr. Sudarshan Vishwas. Special guest Dr. Pius Jain, advisory board members Dr. Kishor Mukhopadhyay, Dr. Krishnan Pradhan, Dr. Devaprasad Sahu, organizing secretary Sri Tapus Pramanik, keynote speaker Professor Dr. Rajiv Chaudhary, eminent speaker Dr. V. Durai Sami, Professor Dr. Rakesh Dube, Dr. Rakesh Tomar, Chairpersons, Dr. Lamlun Burel, Srimati Firoza Murelia, Dr. Swatant Kumar Katian, Lieutenant Dr. Sima Sharma Koshik, Co-Chairpersons, Dr. Mahesh S. Ketmalis, Srimati Girija Vasu, Dr. Atanu Das, Dr. Sumal Roy, all the delegates from India and abroad, all the staff members of Shampur Siddheshwari Mahavidyalay, students of Shampur Siddheshwari Mahavidyalay, especially students from Physical Education Department, Physical Education Foundation members from West Bengal and India, PEFI technical members, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all in the one day international webinar on aspects and prospects of health and fitness during and post COVID-19. I would like to thank Dr. Shantanu Kumar Bose, Principal Sampur Siddheshwari Mahavidyalay for having faith and giving me full freedom for conducting this webinar. I would like to thank the PEFI team who had provided us the wonderful platform and the logistics. My special thank to Dr. Pius Jain for his untiring efforts, for his fabulous support to this wonderful cause of spreading awareness about the physical education and sports during the unfortunate period of lockdown during the pandemic. Due to some emergency work, principals are not able to present in this webinar. He sent a video message. I would like to request the PEFI technical team to play the video. Tarun sir, please. Play the video message. Uh, we are playing just hold on. Okay, Ji.
den ich halt nie. Sound, please, sound. It's not audible. PSG, it's not audible. Sir, uh, it's not voice head, man. Now, it's audible? No. No, he is not audible at all. Okay, uh, PSG, it's not, it's not audible. Uh, I think you should, uh, for the technical problem, I, I think I should move forward. Uh, it is better, it is better. You go ahead. It was audible, sir? No. Okay, then you can go forward. Okay. Uh, thank you. Now I... Uh, Welcome our today's chief guest of this international webinar, Dr. Ende. Dr. Ende has done his MP, MPhil, PhD from LNCP Gwalior. He has done diploma in the sports medicine. He worked as principal of physical education college since 1976 to 2013 at Gujarat and at West Bengal. He performed additional charges as additional DPI physical education and as director state archives as state NSS officer. He was the founder secretary of government sports school at Banipur. He is a member of different committees at various levels. He visited Japan, Seoul Asian Games. Now he is working as director, School of Education, Netaji Subhas Open University, Kolkata. Sir, I request you now to please deliver your valuable speech regarding this webinar. Dr. Ende, please. Am I audible now? Yes, you are audible, sir. Okay. Good morning and warm welcome to all the participants, guests, distinguished professionals in the field of physical education and sports in this international webinar. I congratulate the organizing committee, the Physical Education Foundation of India, West Bengal chapter and all the professionals, those who, to, who 
have taken keen interest and shown initiative in organizing this international event. The person, the institution, that is the Sri Mahavidyalaya, principal, MLA, all the members of the governing body, teachers, and of course, all the distinguished learned speakers of the profession in the technical session, all my colleagues, a good list we have seen, those who are participating in this international webinar. So welcome all and welcome to West Bengal. This is a webinar participants from India and abroad also. So I have just few lines to say what I would like to start and say that India is the youngest country in the world with 42% population comprising youth. And youth being the most valuable, vibrant human resources. So there is, there is a need to be tapped constructively and creatively towards nation building. Health, physical fitness and education being the prime necessity of the nation. It has been given due importance from time to time. For preparing a new India, emphasis has been given to the youth and fitness India movement has been launched by the Honorable Prime Minister. So the opportunity comes to the professionals to engage ourselves and to do something for the profession and for the common people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, uh, uh, your video is off. Your video is off. Please Hello. Go. Your video is off, sir. Yes, please. So, as we understand, physical fitness refers to a set of attributes which enable an individual to be physically active. Being physically fit enables you to more easily meet the physical demands of every living and respond positively to increased physical demand under stressful condition. As we understand, physical fitness, according to the US Department of Health and Human Services, physical fitness is defined as a set of attributes that people have or achieve that relates to the ability to perfect, to perform the activity. So in this international webinar, in this pandemic situation, you are going to talk and we are going to hear the valuable lecture from the resource persons on the aspects and prospects of health and fitness during and post COVID-19. So it is a great opportunity for me and you have, a, I am thankful to the organizing committee, Dr. Amit Banerjee, Dr. Jane, and all others in the PFI team of West Bengal chapter and uh, requested me to give, give a short speech. So I would like to talk about the Swami Vivekananda. His quote, I would like to quote, He Mahapran, though it is in Bengali, He Mahapran, Otho Jago, Jagot Dukhe Pure Khak Hoye Jachche, Tomra Ki Nidrae Boshe Achyo. Ukhe Dhanao, Shakta Hao, Dipta Hao, Jabotiyo daikto nijer kaadhe nao. Aar eta shab shumay maathai rekho. Tumi tomar niyamito shrishta. Tumar je puriman shokti prajan. Shabta tomar muddhi yache. Shutarang nijer bhovishat nijer kei gorte haave. This reflects to the profession also. So we from the field of physical education and sports. We have and you all have contributed a lot for development of the nation and for the youth. So I, uh, I am hopeful that this international seminar will uh, give a new height and a new thoughts of action in due course. We will be eager to listen to the resource persons and uh, I congratulate the organizing committee once again. Dr. Sao is also there, Dr. Bhomik is also there, Dr. Atunu Das is there and so many from West Bengal and India and abroad also. I congratulate you and I request you that under this pandemic situation, you have taken a keen interest and you have shown a uh, good interest 
in this topic, which will create a new venture and a new guidelines to our common people in India and abroad. With all these words, I congratulate you. I thank you for giving me an opportunity. And we all are together in West Bengal and India to promote fitness, physical education and sports in near future also. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech. Now I welcome the guest of honor, Dr. A.K. Bose. He has done MP, MA Sociology, PhD Physical Education, Diploma in Coaching at Athletics. He is having 34 years teaching at BPED level, 22 years teaching at MPED level, served as officer in charge, and then the principal of Postgraduate Government Institute for Physical Education, Banipur, North Chopis He worked as officer in charge of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Government Sports School, Banipur, North Chopis Experience in teaching MPhil program and guiding research studies, guided PhD scholars. Now I request Dr. A.K. Bose to deliver your valuable speech regarding this webinar. Sir, please. Hello. <clears throat> Is that okay, Dr. Amit? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, nice. Uh, first of all, I just want to greet good morning to everyone. Uh, starting from Sri Kali for the Mondol MLA. Dr. Santanu Bose, principal of Shampur uh, Siddhashari Mahavidale. Dr. Ain, they happen to be my principal as well as elder brother. Dr. George Abraham, principal of YMCA College of Physical Education. Dr. Sudarshan Bishas, he is the president of PFI West Bengal chapter and in fact, Dr. Piju is the national secretary. Tarun, Dr. Tarun as usual. Members of the advisory board, keynote speakers, the participants, guests, distinguished professionals, and learned listeners. To everybody, I greet from core of my heart a very, very good morning and welcome everyone for participation in this international seminars on aspects and prospects of health and fitness after COVID-19. So in this time, a lot of seminars are being held over COVID-19 and its effect on health, physical fitness, well-being, and other concepts also. Therefore, different aspects have been identified by different authors and speakers at different times at different levels. Ladies and gentlemen, what I just want to say that our humankind is going through a new and unprecedented experiences with rapidly changing of this COVID-19 pandemic. Pandemic has been, the term has been given by WHO. According to WHO, the problem does not lie in the COVID-19 alone, but rather in fear, panic and terror caused by the spread of this virus. And further, it has been amplified by the medias, news media, print media, and all. The current crisis is not the pandemic alone. What I said before, rather it is of the far-reaching consequences of human behavior. The, rapidly there is, we have seen the changing of human behavior in every aspect. And numerous other factors are also influencing this. So influential factors are to be identified. Hope these seminars will bring out some more idea in, in this regards. We have seen that different measures have been imposed by the governments by way of maintaining social distances, imposing lockdown and then unlock and a lot of things. Sometimes the police personnel and the authorities have imposed their decisions over the public not to do that way or to be in their home and all. 
thing is that government in this respect at this moment spending lot of billions of currencies for improving the public health status at different countries throughout the world and that amount could be utilized for infrastructural development for sports development for institutional development or could be expanded over education and child health but due to pandemic the amount and now been diverted for the development of medical facilities and uh, improving much more uh, public health conditions we have seen the three great revolutions at different times if we just remember when the first fire was discovered that was one era and then came the agricultural revolution and thereafter the industrial revolution so major revolution and different changes globally that came and improved the conditions societal development human development at different times and now we are what we are seeing the development of technology and the supremacy of the new communication systems you see students are getting trained they are getting education by way of virtual learning we are talking we are meeting through virtual meeting so this communication methods and other things have come up and has taken place due to this covid 19 whether it is a we say it's a boon or is a uh, disgraceful thing we do not know the thing is that we have to accept thing and we have to understand the present scenario and definitely the new methodology new uh, sort of uh, policies are to be developed so that more and more people come together and they do not disintegrate rather they come closer to improve the education system to improve the society to improve the uh, human resources this is very important so what i want to underline uh, as an individual there are a lot of aspects that have been that is a main theme of the seminars lot of aspects that influence the human life like the social aspects the uh, uh, environmental aspects psychological aspects emotional aspects and all i just want to i just want to say something in in regard to the psychological and neurological uh, neurological aspects from my personal experiences is that someone in britain one doctor is saying that his patients reported that when he was suffering through covid 19 he said i can't breathe i can't breathe but when he came back after 24 days from the hospital he said i can't think what is more important is that previously he could not breathe now he cannot think what is the idea the thing is that our cognitive part that is also being influenced through this covid 19 there have been cases where people are fumbling in saying something they are not getting the words to express themselves which is further is directed by our brain through our brain and sometimes they are getting exhausted after crossing a road after crossing the road they are all exhausted and we are saying that every every day you must do some exercise you must go for fitness activities you should do something how this will be possible that is a major question for us moreover they are suffering through weaknesses they cannot sit idle sometimes they are not able to recognize their own relatives or own son daughters or even his wife they cannot count people are farming of this so this domain the psychological in with the neurological concept has been has influenced the human kind in a prominent very very, very uh, what do we say in a strange manner so this we will have to overcome and we have to find out a new way so that new society come up because this is a new society this is a new world what we are saying we have not experienced before and what we would be we do not know so therefore without taking much of our time and discussing over the thing because more and more people will be coming and talking regarding this uh, we really we have seen that in recent years many of our sports persons have, have they have uh, let their life and other expired died out of covid 19 and sufficient to say our uh, 
first of all, our president of our country, he is also it's well like that. Chetan Johan, we know it all. So a lot of people from our uh, Gracia, the Spanish coach, Garcia. So these people from our field also, they have also expired due to COVID-19. So whether you are fit or fittest, that is not the matter. COVID will not distinguish whether you are a Hindu or Muslim, because Christian or something like that. Whether you belong to a higher caste or lower caste, that doesn't matter. So no caste color creep. COVID can come and COVID may influence you. So that way we have to be very careful. Whatever the social distancing or whatever the precaution, precautionary measure we have to take, we must know. So uh, I just want to quote something from our uh, sports persons. If you say Sachin Tendulkar, he said in somewhere that players will worry for some time so when it comes to using the saliva, or shining the ball. They will have to wait for shining their ball. But we have what we have seen in Dubai, the IPL is going on. There is no people in the stadium, but the thing is going on. But how do, how do we know it? through the print media or other telecast through televisions or other medias. Abhinav Binda said, so time will come, safety protocols will be heightened. So we have to improve our fitness through sports. Bajrang and then uh, other, other wrestlers, they said, now we have a lot of time so we can uh, rectify our mistakes and other uh, weaknesses so that the time will come when we'll go and meet on the field with a new vigor and strength. Uh, Medicom also saying that let us wait for the vaccine so that we can fight in the ring again, we can go back to the ring. Vijendra Singh, he said, this is difficult to bring the fans once again, as it used to be. Now we have to think over it and we have to, mass media has to work over it so that uh, more professional boxing, so more spectators come on the professional boxing ring. And then uh, our uh, Sardara Singh, Sardara Singh, the greatest hockey player, he was also saying that once the sports resumes, we'll all come back to the field. And of course, the social distance, this method has to be improved more. So whatever the aspects and prospects we discussed today, let us join our venture together and make a new world that will definitely give us some blessings and highlight us so that we can improve our status also. With these few words, I just want to thank everyone, everybody who are seniors to me and our great wishes to the organizers and my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech regarding this webinar. Now, I welcome our guest of honor and my dear friend, Dr. George Abraham. He is now working as a principal YMCA College of Physical Education, very prestigious institution in the field of physical education in India. He is very sound in academic qualifications, has done MA in economics, MA in population studies, MBA, MSW, Master of Social Work, MSc in Yoga, Master of Physical Education and Sports, MPhil in Physical Education, PhD, in physical education, PhD in business administration, PG, DY, postgraduate diploma in yoga, postgraduate diploma in fitness management, postgraduate diploma in hospital management, postgraduate diploma in human rights, postgraduate diploma in public administration, advanced diploma in acupuncture, his teaching experience are excellent. 19 years of teaching experience and the research experience is 20 years. His specialized area are training methods, exercise physiology, prevention of hypokinetic diseases, track and field. He already produced 25 MPhil scholar and 8 PhD scholar and published 5 books. Article published in the journal in the national level 72 and the international level 90. Article published in conference proceedings 90. Paper presentation in conference and seminar at the national level 135 and international level 88. And he invited as a chief guest keynote address resource persons in various places. He's in the editorial board and 
sporting event he organized all india inter university south zone university inter college competition etc and uh, he awarded dr radha krishnan gold medal award for outstanding individual achievement in education and research in 2013 bangalore mahatma gandhi gold medal award for outstanding individual achievement in research in 2015 delhi dr abdul kalam award for outstanding individual achievement and distinguished service in education and research in 2016 received excellence in physical education and sports award given by physical education foundation of india pefi 2016 new delhi received sports scientist award 2017 received best citizen of india award received samaj ratna award received special award from nafis received distinguished professor award in education received outstanding faculty award received yoga sudhar award received lifetime achievement <coughs> award sorry and his sports achievement award also are <coughs> excellent very sorry world champion with four gold medals for 60 meter 100 meter 200 meter and pentathlon in australia world master games at adelaide australia secured five gold medals for 100 meter 200 meter 400 meter 4 into 100 meter relay and 4 into 400 meter relay in international mercantile track and field championship at colombo sri lanka secured silver medal for 100 meter relay in 18th asian master athletic championship secured gold medal for 100 meter in india international master athletic championship at goa secured four gold medals for 100 200 400 4 into 100 meter relay in first national mercantile track and field championship at mumbai seven times national champion for 100 and 200 meter sprint at bangalore and he is the fastest man of india above 40 years from 2012 to 2017 excellent my dear friend dr george now i request you to say few words for your for this webinar Please, Dr. George, thank please. You. Thank you, Dr. Amit Banerjee, for your great words. Even I am not a great personality. You are great, man. You are great. Chief Patron of uh, this international webinar and the President of uh, Shampur, Sadeshuri Mahavidyalaya, West Bengal, Sri Kalipada Mantel, MLA, Principal and Patron, uh, Dr. Sanju Kumar Bose, Chief Guest of this international webinar. Dr. Ayan Day, Director of School Education, Dr. A. K. Bose, Dr. Amit Banerjee, Dr. Sudarshan Biswas, Dr. Spiel Jain, the uh, General Secretary of PEFI, Dr. A keynote speaker, Dr. My good friend, Dr. Rajiv Chaudhary, Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay, and Professor Rajesh Dubey, Dr. international delegate dr rajesh tomar my good friend dr seema koshik dr m skazing smith uh, girija basu organizing secretary sri tabas pramanik and other eminent personalities uh, delegates and friends very good morning to all of you first of all i thank the organizers especially the organizing secretary sri tabas pramanik and uh, dr amit banerji for inviting me and given this opportunity uh, to address you friends uh, i hope you are doing well even during this pandemic uh, and unpredicted situation right now we can't predict what will happen tomorrow because we still don't know how the virus will play out again everybody is making their own guesses but nobody knows what will happen 
friends uh, don't worry about covid-19 we have to live with covid-19 virus we really don't know how things will be in another uh, six month time or one year how it uh, going to play out so we have to wait the best thing to do is right how to upgrade ourselves that means how we can improve our immunity to resist covid-19 and overcome covid-19 survival is very important rather than anything in our life life is very important rather than money position status power etc so we have to think how we can survive with covid-19 that is what is very important for the present scenario anyhow the selected topic uh, the theme of his international webinar is an apt for the present scenario aspects and prospects of health and fitness during and post covid-19 see we know very well as our honorable prime minister said we can prevent covid-19 through our uh, traditional way our herbs spices and trad i mean uh, through our alternative medicines our ash ash ministry also supporting this statement that is true i am also supporting but to certain extent if you want to improve our immunity permanently as who said we have to spend at least 30 to 45 minutes for physical activity every day then only we can improve our immunity permanently moreover you know one thing during as well as post this covid 19 we are going to face or we are facing the real problem is lifestyle diseases those who are having hypogenetic diseases or we can say uh, that cholesterol uh, uh, level uh, imbalance uh, then uh, uh, pressure variations then sugar problems other uh, 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 coronary artery diseases this type of uh, lifestyle problems is the main enemy of us these are the lifestyle diseases are very closely associated with moreover we can say very good friend of covid 19 so once we control our lifestyle diseases 100% we can prevent covid 19 that is what we are going to face in post covid period lifestyle diseases because of sedentary lifestyle so moreover you know one thing see during this lockdown i heard about from different states my status is not 100% true but around 90% true uh, from southern india southern part of india tamil nadu kerala andhra tamil nadu pondicherry this state i have statistics around uh, 420 people were committed suicide from april to 31st of august last uh, man, four months time during lockdown you know what is the reason out of that around uh, 210 people belongs to age group of between 10 not people students i mean children between the age group of 10 and 16 you know what is the reason they don't have emotional qualities since they are staying with their family they are getting stress stress leads to uh, depression and last depression leads to committing suicide they don't know how to control their emotions they don't know their control their stress they don't know how how to tackle that stress they don't know how to overcome the stress because of stress only because of uh, uh, because stress, that much of stress only distress only they are committing suicide so american college of sports medicine acsm clearly say many supporting studies are there physical activity fitness that is what is very important as per title fitness is very important not only physical fitness physically physiologically mentally socially and spiritually total fitness is very important to improve our emotional qualities once you start when you have total fitness we can control our emotions that is what we are lacking during now especially during the present situation so my dear friends this is the right time to start physical activity we only can prevent 
physical education and sports fraternity only can prevent COVID-19. Medical people can cure COVID-19. Since we don't have any medicine or vaccine for COVID-19, we don't have any other option. We cannot depend on any medicine. We can depend on our own fitness. Through physical activity only, entertainment physical activity only, we can improve our fitness. I could remember the words of uh, Swamiji, Swami Vivekananda around 100 years back. He said, you are nearer to heaven through football than through the study of Bhagavad Gita. You are nearer to heaven through football than through the study of Bhagavad Gita. What a beautiful quotes. If you want to reach heaven, if you want to go to heaven without proper fitness and happiness, you cannot reach even heaven. That is what Swamiji said 100 years back. So, my dear friends, we don't know what will happen tomorrow during this pandemic situation. How many of us will be wiped out? How many of us will be here? We have no clear picture. <coughs> Sorry. Only guess what is going, going on. So using our imagination, we are causing fear instead that the time around, let us invest it upon ourselves into more balance, more competent, and be a better human beings. Uh, I would like to appreciate the organizers, especially the organizing secretary and team who took a great effort to make this global webinar in an effective manner. Uh, we are expecting a good deliberation over here because we have sufficient uh, uh, resource persons today. Uh, moreover, uh, since the situation is beyond our control, my dear friends, the next three months or six months, we must be must be at physically fitter than what we are right now. Mentally, we must be sharper, and emotionally, we must be balanced, and energetically, we must be more efficient. So we can depend on fitness to improve immunity. We can depend only on fitness since medicine and vaccine is uh, not available. I wish all the success for this uh, international webinar. Uh, I think this would be a very fruitful and informative sessions. Once again, I thank to the organizers for given this opportunity to share my views and knowledge to this gathering. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. George Abraham. Thank you so much. Now I welcome our special guest of this webinar, Dr. Sudarshan Viswas. He is the Associate Professor of Physical Education, Vishwa Bharati, and the Joint Secretary, Vishwa Bharati Sports Board. He is having 14 years experience, acted as sports officer, University of Calcutta since 1996 to 2010. Attend six FISU conferences during World University Games, Bangkok 2007, 2009, 2011, 2013, 2015, and in 2017. Calcutta University cricket team become champion Pan Asian Games at Perth, Australia 2005 under his supervision. He is acting as one coordinator of South Asian University Sports Federation. Acted as organizing secretary for more than 100 various inter-university championship. Acted as chairman of the college and university subcommittee of cricket Association of Bengal, acted several times as a member of governing body of Indian Football Association, West Bengal. Seven PhD awarded and five PhD scholar continue under his supervision. He acted as <coughs> Indian University football coach to participate in 
Asian University Football Tournament 2018 held at China. Several times acted as All India University Observer in various inter-university competitions. He acted as manager of East Zone Combined University Cricket main team for VZ Trophy. And now he is the president of PEFI West Bengal chapter. Now I request Dr. Sudarshan Biswas, please deliver your valuable speech regarding this webinar. Sudarshan sir, please. Honorable <clears throat> President, Mr. Kalipoda Mondal, MLA, Dr. Santanu Kumar Bose, Principal Sampur Siddhishwari Mohabiddala, and respected and beloved my uh, chief guest, Dr. A. M. Day. He is a dynamic sports and physical education administrator in our West Bengal, as well as the, he is the patron of PEFI West Bengal chapter. And Dr. Asim Kumar Bose is my elder brother, and he is the former principal of Postgraduate Training College of Physical Education, Banipur, as well as the advisory committee member of our PEFI West Bengal chapter, respected to Dr. George Abraham, Principal YMCA College of Physical Education, Chennai, and my beloved Dr. Pidus Jain, a dynamic leader of, as well as the Secretary of Physical Education Foundation of India, uh, as well as the respected all advisory members, Dr. Kishnendu Podhan, Vice President of PEFI West Bengal Chapter, Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay, and Omit Banerjee, the Executive Committee member of if he was member chapter, Dr. Devok Prasad Saud also present here. He is also respected. He is the secretary of PFI was member chapter. Respected all research persons, respected all other dignitaries and delegates. On behalf of PFI was member chapter, heartily thanks to the organizing committee, especially the organizing secretary, Mr. Tapos Paramanik, for using this important topic, the aspect and prospect. Uh, for prospect of health and fitness during post COVID 19 in this pandemic situation. Good health means sound body and sound mind, which mainly depends upon your fitness level. Fitness means ability to perform your daily tasks in an easy and effective manner. Fitness you cannot purchase from the market, which you have to earn to various physical activities with the help of physical education teachers, coaches, and own correct healthy practice with, the, with your experience. So Dr. George already said nicely, in new education policies, government also giving more importance on sport. If we follow the broad-based principles, means physical fitness, for all students in education system, followed by identification the talented students for specific profession to get the higher results. See, the intellectual capability and physical efficiency are the main key of your good performance. Means you can take the correct and quick decision in appropriate situation. In this right time, it is the right time to implement the compulsory physical education and sports in our education curriculum. Then only we can cover the health and fitness development and also fight for any disease, not only the COVID-19. Again, I thanks to the organizing committee to take this webinar in this right time. And I hope the main point after delivering the presentation by renowned resource person must be submitted to the concern authorities to take proper necessary action. Lastly, I recollecting again, Dr. A. N. D. already said that Jago and implement the physical education and sports in our educational curriculum. Thank you, thanks to all, and have a good day. Thank you, Sudarshan sir, for your valuable speech. Now, I request Dr. Pius Jain, is the National Secretary, Physical Education Foundation of India, to deliver your valuable speech regarding this webinar. 
डॉक्टर पीयूष जैन प्लीज Thank you, sir. At the outset, I am very thankful to Shyampur Siddhesuri Mahavidyalaya and Pepsi West Bengal chapter for organizing this international webinar on aspects and prospects of health and fitness during and post COVID-19. We all know that we all are facing the problem of COVID-19. i hope that in this webinar the speaker like rajiv choudhry sir rakesh tomar ji sudarshan biswas sir and all other eminent speaker will deliver the important points which will help of physical education teacher physical education professionals for improving not only their own fitness own immunity but for society and for the country respected chief guest dr a n day sir and guest of honor dr a k boss sir dr george abraham ji dr sudarshan biswas ji all are my seniors rajiv choudhry sir mentor of pepsi मैं जानता हूं कि इस वेबिनार में आज जो कुछ होने वाला है जितने लोग स्पीकर्स आए हैं या जिन लोगों के यहाँ पे नाम है वो सभी लोग अपना एक्सपीरियंस हम सब लोगों के साथ शेयर करने वाले हैं मैं यहाँ पर कॉफी नेशनल हेड होने की तरफ से कुछ बातें आप लोगों को बताना चाहता हूं दोस्तों आप सभी लोग जानते हैं कि जैसा अभी सुदर्शन दा ने भी कहा जॉर्ज सर ने भी कहा कि कोविड 19 कितने दिन चलेगा कुछ क्या होगा कुछ पता नहीं है बट इट्स ए हाई टाइम फॉर फिजिकल एजुकेशन फर्टिनिटी दैट वी कैन इंप्रूव अवर सेल्फ टू गिव अवर बेस्ट टू द सोसाइटी एज ए हेल्थ एजुकेटर जॉर्ज सर अभी कह रहे थे सुदर्शन दा कह रहे थे और डे सर भी कह रहे थे कि फिजिकल एजुकेशन का इंपॉर्टेंट रोल आ गया है इससे पहले बिफोर कोविड 19 नो बडी वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट द फिजिकल एजुकेशन नो बडी वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट द इम्यूनिटी फिटनेस डिफरेंट डिफरेंट पॉइंट बट जब से कोविड 19 पूरे देश में आया है पूरे विश्व में आया है एवरीबडी इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द इम्यूनिटी डेवलपमेंट फिजिकल फिटनेस फिजिकल एक्टिविटी दिस वर्ल्ड इज मोर पॉपुलर नाउ इट इज बट as a point of physical education teacher physical education professionals sport professional we know all each these things hum logon ne in sab par bahut padhai ki hai aur in sab cheezon ko hum logon ne dekha hai so it's a high time for us to evaluate ourselves and to give the information to the society jaise sabhi log keh rahe hain ki it's a proof वर्ल्ड वाइड प्रूफ कि फिजिकल फिटनेस और फिजिकल एक्टिविटी जिनकी अच्छी है जिनकी इम्यूनिटी अच्छी है उनको कोरोना कोविड नाइन्टीन नहीं होगा और ये मैं दावे के साथ कह सकता हूं आई एम हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर दैट फिजिकल एजुकेशन टीचर या स्पोर्ट्स प्रोफेशनल्स हैं इनकी इम्यूनिटी बाकी लोगों से अच्छी होती है और लाइफ स्टाइल डिजीजेस जितनी होती है वो कम होती है मेरा और पैफी का पूरे विश्व भर में देश भर में यह मानना है कि लाइफ स्टाइल डिजीजेज हो या इस तरह की कोई भी बीमारियां हो ब्लड प्रेशर हार्ट अटैक ये स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन और फिजिकल एजुकेशन प्रोफेशनल्स को कम आती है जिस सोसाइटी में अच्छा पार्क होता है जिस सोसाइटी में अच्छी फैसिलिटीज होती है खेलने की कूदने की और बच्चों को अच्छा इन्वॉल्वमेंट मिलता है वो लोग कम हॉस्पिटल जाते हैं एज कंपेयर टू दो आर लिविंग दट प्लेस वेयर इज नो प्ले ग्राउंड तो हम लोगों को एज ए फिजिकल एजुकेशन टीचर ये देखना है कि हम लोग जहां पर रहते हैं वहां पर हम लोग कैसे इस एजुकेशन को इम्पार्ट कर सके ये जो आज हमको यहाँ पर सीखने को मिलेगा इस वेबिनार में थ्रू अवर स्पीकर एंड की नोट स्पीकर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री एंड वर्ल्ड वी मस्ट लर्न 
एंड वी गिव दिस नॉलेज टू द सोसाइटी ऐसा नहीं है कि हम लोगों ने खुद सीख लिया और बस हो गया कि हमको ये नॉलेज मिल गई यहाँ पर कि पोस्ट कोविड और आ, क्या एस्पेक्ट रहेंगे ड्यूरिंग कोविड हमको क्या करना है कि आज जो हम लोग यहाँ से सीखे सभी डेलीगेट उस इंफॉर्मेशन को हम लोग पास ऑन करें अपनी सोसाइटी में हम जितना कोशिश करें कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा इंफॉर्मेशन दें लोगों को कि हाउ दे कैन डेवलप देयर इम्यूनिटी सो इट्स ए अवर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इसके दो फायदे होंगे पहला फायदा तो ये होगा कि आपकी सोसाइटी आपकी फैमिली स्वस्थ रहेगी स्वस्थ रहेगा फिट इंडिया मूवमेंट चल रहा है देश भर में दूसरा जो मिसकंसेप्शन फिजिकल एजुकेशन और स्पोर्ट्स प्रोफेशनल के बारे में है देश भर में वो भी दूर होंगे हमको अपनी उपयोगिता इंपॉर्टेंस फिजिकल एजुकेशन की साबित करने का एक बड़ा मौका कोविड 19 ने पूरे देश के फिजिकल एजुकेशन टीचर्स को दिया है सो इट्स माय हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट टू ऑल द डेलीगेट्स दोज हु आर वाचिंग दिस प्रोग्राम ऑन यूट्यूब एंड ऑन दिस जूम मीटिंग आई रिक्वेस्ट टू ईच एंड एवरी दैट लर्न एंड गिव दिस इंफॉर्मेशन टू योर फैमिली योर सोसाइटी योर स्कूल वेयर यू आर वर्किंग so this will give a healthy society fit india fit nation aap logo ko pata hai bhi ke hamare mannye pradhan mantri ji ne fit india movement launch kiya hua hai jisme 2 15 august se 2 october tak lagatar fit india freedom run ka aayojan kiya ja raha hai aur mujhe aaj yahan batate hue bada garv aur harsh hai ki pefi ne 10 din ka pefi fit india freedom run ka aayojan kiya tha 29 august se 7 september tak और देश भर में पैथी के फैले हुए हजारों लाखों कार्यकर्ताओं ने इस रन में पार्टिसिपेट किया था वी वर टारगेटिंग हम लोग एक लाख लोगों को रन के लिए मोटिवेट uh, करेंगे रन में दौड़ाएंगे एंड वी क्रॉस दैट लिमिट एंड एक लाख अड़सठ हजार वन लैख सिक्सटी एट थाउजेंड फोर्टी एट पर्सन ने रजिस्टर्ड किया इस रन में और पूरे देश भर में और जो हमारी टॉप टेन स्टेट की रैंकिंग है उसमें भी वेस्ट बंगाल स्टेट को सिक्स रैंक मिला हुआ है जो कि एक बड़ा अचीवमेंट है वेस्ट बंगाल पैफी के लिए कि विद इन टू मंथ पैफी वेस्ट बंगाल चैप्टर का अभी दो महीने पहले ही गठन हुआ और दो महीने में उन्होंने अपनी मेहनत से देश भर की जितनी स्टेटों की रैंकिंग की है पैफी ने फिट इंडिया फ्रीडम रन के लिए उसमें सिक्स प्लेस हासिल किया है तो गिव अ बिग हैंड टू द सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर देवा प्रसाद साहू प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर सुदर्शन विश्वास सर ज्वाइंट सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर प्रसून डॉक्टर I I am forgetting various names. इन लोगों ने इतनी मेहनत की है पैफी के कार्यकर्ता ने कि बेस्ट बंगाल से बहुत सारे लोगों ने फिट इंडिया फ्रीडम रन में रजिस्टर्ड किया और दौड़े और उसका वीडियो अपलोड हुए एक बड़ा क्रांति का आह्वान हुआ इसी तरह से पैफी ने स्वदेशी गेम्स के ऊपर भी मुहिम चलाई हुई है कि आप लोगों के जो स्वदेशी गेम है उनको हमको लेके आना है और वी आर अप्रोचिंग टू द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एज पैफी इज ए नेशनल स्पोर्ट्स प्रमोशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ यूथ एंड स्पोर्ट्स दैट इन दिस अवर न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी दर इज ए टू पार्ट वन इज स्वदेशी भाषा अप टू द क्लास फिफ्थ पांचवी क्लास तक सभी लोग अपनी लैंग्वेज में पढ़ाई करेंगे जैसे आप बंगाल में है तो बंगाली लैंग्वेज में ही पांचवी क्लास तक की पढ़ाई होगी ऐसे ही हमारा मानना है कि पांचवी क्लास तक स्वदेशी खेल खेले जाए जो बंगाल के खेल हैं वही खेल या हम उनको ओलंपिक इवेंट्स करा रहे हैं हमको क्या करना है हमको उनको उनके लोकल गेम्स जो आपके डिस्ट्रिक्ट के गेम है जो आपके ब्लॉक के गेम है वही गेम अपने सिलेबस में भी लेके आना है कैरिकुलम में भी लेकर आना है तो इट्स ए पार्ट ऑफ पैफी मूवमेंट के हम लोग स्वदेशी भाषा स्वदेशी खेल पर काम करेंगे और देश को फिट बनाने में मदद करेंगे मैं ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सेक्रेटरी तापस सर को कोऑर्डिनेटर अमित बनर्जी सर को और पूरी टीम को बधाई देता हूं कि उन्होंने इतना अच्छा प्रोग्राम का आयोजन किया और जो बातें मैंने रखी इन पर भी आप लोग गौर करें कि कैसे एक फिजिकल एजुकेशन टीचर अपनी इंफॉर्मेशन को सोसाइटी में इम्पार्ट कर सकता है अब धीमे धीमे लॉकडाउन खत्म हो रहा है और चीजें खुल रही हैं तो हमारी कोशिश रहना चाहिए कि हम लोग सेफ डिस्टेंस मेंटेन करते हुए कोविड 19 के जो प्रोटोकॉल हैं उनको पालन करते हुए स्पोर्ट्स की एक्टिविटीज शुरू करेंगे और उन स्पोर्ट्स एक्टिविटीज में इन बातों का ध्यान रखेंगे जो बातें हमने कोरोना के दौरान सीखी हैं उन बातों को हम लोग आगे प्रेजेंट करेंगे थैंक यू वंस अगेन टू ऑल थैंक यू डॉक्टर पीयूष जैन फॉर योर वेल्युएबल स्पीच now we'll move to the session 
and in the session one our keynote speaker is dr rajiv choudhury dr rajiv choudhury is a professor in physical education former head school of studies in physical education former dean faculty of physical education head school of studies in law chairman board of studies joint proctor and dean student welfare pandit ravi shankar shukla university raipur chatisgarh is a visiting professor at poland and is a visiting professor at the germany his qualification is a mpa mphil phd postgraduate diploma in yoga and medicine postgraduate diploma in yoga and naturopathy postgraduate diploma in yoga and psychotherapy is the black belt diploma in judo second done has done netaji subhas national institute for sports has done the certificate course he is qualified net and srf sir dr rajiv sir please before you start your program i will like to introduce the chairman of the chairperson of the session dr lamlul buril is the associate professor and uh, he has done mp bp from lakshmi national college of physical education gwalior joined as a permanent faculty of sai lncp trivandrum kerala since november 1996 he also has the distinction of serving as officer on special duty for a period of 3 years as an administrator in sports authority of india at northeast regional center imphal manipur presently deals with both sports psychology and sports management in master degree level <clears throat> dr burel plays and teaches various games and sports besides football which is always his first choice and represented jiwa ji university in all india intervarsity championship he is already authors and co-authors number of books with few more on the way on his favorite <coughs> and his favorite dialogue is how a teacher teaches or how committed a teacher is the most and only reliable judges will be those he or she taught thank you lamlul and our co chair person of this session is dr mahesh and uh, he worked as a associate professor working vishwavarti university assistant professor vishwavarti university 2019 to 2014 lecturer in a college of physical education at pune He, is, he has done phd master of physical education bachelor of physical education from lnip gwalior and uh, thank you uh, dr mohesh welcome you in this session now i request our keynote speaker dr rajiv choudhury please deliver your lecture dr rajiv choudhury please thank you dr banerjee lot of thanks am i audible yes you are audible okay thank you eminent personalities from different fields my seniors members of organizing committee each and every unit associated with this organization pefi officials participants friends ladies and gentlemen at the very outset i would like to express my sincere thanks to the organizers for providing me an opportunity to speak in front of you i also express my sincere thanks to pefi officials especially to shri piyush jain for conducting these types of webinars i am feeling great pleasure as i got this opportunity as we all are aware that the international webinar on aspects and prospects of health and fitness during and post covid 19 is organized by 
आईक्यूएसी ऑफ श्यामपुर सिद्धेश्वरी महाविद्यालय इन कोलोबरेशन विद फिजिकल एजुकेशन फाउंडेशन ऑफ इंडिया वेस्ट बंगाल चैप्टर आई कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट फिजिकल एजुकेशन फाउंडेशन ऑफ इंडिया फॉर कंडक्टिंग दीज टाइप्स ऑफ प्रोग्राम्स पीईएफआई इज डूइंग ग्रेट पीएफआई इज कंट्रीब्यूटिंग अ लॉट टू द फील्ड ऑफ फिजिकल एजुकेशन एंड स्पोर्ट्स साइंसेस since i have been assigned only 30 minutes to speak in front of you by my classmate dr amit benerji the organizing secretary of this program so i will try my level best to speak and to share my views in front of you within 30 minutes please switch on the video i am trying to switch on the video but it's uh, i don't know okay okay how did this happen dear friends if we talk about the today's condition the condition of covid 19 in this pandemic before this pandemic we were free we were free to do all types of activities all types of activities related to physical education and sports but nowadays we are living in a protective layer rajiv, we are living in, rajiv, rajiv. Yes, Yes yes uh, your uh, video is not video is not on now it, it I am trying to on my video but unable to on my video Dr Banerjee am i visible no not 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 yet uh, no I, problem uh, please continue uh, dr rajiv it's okay if you can okay thank you from for, uh, from my side it's on from my side it's on nowadays we are living in a protective layer or we can say that we are living in a bubble and we have only two protective layers since there is no vaccination first layer is precautions we have to follow the precautions second layer is to improve our immunity and physical education and yogic sciences plays a vital role in improving immunity dear friends in this pandemic of covid 19 the daily routine food habits and the lifestyle of the individuals have been changed we all know that and due to this change or due to the change in the daily routine food habits and lifestyle people are drawing their health status fitness level as well as spiritual development to the brink of precipice so instead of giving stress on the osseous tops we should give stress on the tops which are helpful to retrench our weaknesses which are helpful for us these types of webinars these types of programs are, are very fructiferous in nature and these provide guidelines ki how we have to follow instructions in this pandemic since the theme of the seminar is associated with different terms that is health fitness so i will start from the concept of health friends we all are familiar about the definition of health given by world health organization who that is health is a complete state of being health is a state of physical mental and social well being not merely the absence of disease earlier in the year 1948 only three dimensions were there physical mental and social but later few more dimensions were added by world health organization in the definition of health and these are emotional and spiritual so we have to attain the health related to different dimensions physically we have we should be fit mentally socially spiritually as well as emotionally and nowadays in this pandemic situation the spiritual and emotional development is required since we are facing several mind related disorders and we have to improve our immunity we also know that we have two different types of immunities innate immunity as well as acquired immunity this innate immunity depends on our lymphocytes sorry depends on our leukocytes that is white blood cells depends on granulocytes and we know that there are three different types of granulocytes basophils eosinophils and neutrophils 
And on the other hand, the acquired immunity depends on the lymphocytes. And we know that these has two types of cells. That is B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. And the B lymphocytes works as a military intelligence system. On the other hand, the T lymphocytes are like soldiers. After receiving the information from B lymphocytes, these attack the invading organism. These attack different viruses that attacks on our body. So we have to improve our immunity and by the help of physical education activities, by the help of physical activities, by the help of yogic activities, we can improve our immunity and our body can face the invading organisms or the foreign substances. Now the question arises, how we can improve our immunity in this pandemic situation by practicing yoga as well as by practicing physical activities or by performing different activities. Friends, every individual wants immediate effect of different types of activities and these activities may be physical activities or these may be yogic activities. But we should keep in our mind that there are three different types of effects of different activities that we perform. Maybe any type of activity, maybe aerobic, maybe running, jumping, etc. First one is the immediate effect. Immediate effect means the effect that takes place during the session and immediately after the session. But we should not only think about the immediate effect. There are different types of effects also. Next type of effect is a delayed effect. And we should expect the delayed effect during performing our sessions. Delayed effect means the final outcome of the training session or the final outcome of different training sessions. Since we perform different types of sessions, maybe strength activities, maybe endurance activities, maybe agility type of activities, maybe flexibility exercises. And from the field of yoga, we also practice pranayama, we practice asanas, we practice different types of shat karmas, etc. It means that delayed effect is the final outcome of the training sessions. The third type of effect that takes place is the cumulative effect. That is the most important. We should keep in our mind about the cumulative effect of different sessions that we perform during our training sessions. Cumulative effect means as we know that in any training session, in our day-to-day -day life, in our lifestyle, we do not perform a single type of activity. We perform different types of activities. So cumulative effect is the sum of the effect of all types of activities that is known as the cumulative effect. So we should not, my suggestion is we should not expect only immediate effect, we should concentrate on the final outcome that is the delaying effect as well as the cumulative effect of different types of sessions, different types of practices. In our training sessions, we do different types of activities. We know that nothing new and to understand in a better way, we should have an idea about the training load. What do you mean by training load? It means we have to undergo a training load. And that we know that a training load is a bodily and otherwise demand made on an organism caused by well-directed motor stimuli. In this standardized definition, it means it's clear that it is a demand of body as well as demand of the mind. It means this is related to both that is mind as well as body. And it is given by different motor stimulus. It means by the help of different motor actions. And the important part of is this training load is this should be under guidance or under well direction. Otherwise, that may lead to negative effects also. So to understand any training session, to understand the training load, we should have an idea about the different terms which are used in this. These terms are intensity, density, volume, 
and frequency. Since later I will discuss about what type of activities should be performed in this pandemic situation, what type of intent intensity should be there, what, what type of frequency should be there, what type of volume should be there. So the volume means the total work done and the intensity means the speed of work done. It means we perform different activities with different intensities. It means with different speeds. And this intensity is divided into different, two different subparts. Since we cannot perform any activity continuously with higher intensity, with high intensity, we have to take rest in between. We have to take rest periods in between. It means this intensity is divided into two subparts. That is intensity and density. Intensity means speed of work done. Density is the rest period between the two sets of intensities. On the other hand, volume, that is total work done, is also subdivided into two parts. First one is duration. Duration means that may be a distance or time. And second one is the frequency. Frequency means the number of repetitions. So we should have an idea about these terms. Intense, again, I repeat, intensity means speed of work done. Density means the rest period in between the two sets of intensities. Duration means that may be distance or time and frequency means a number of repetitions. Since I will, we will discuss what type of activity should we perform in this pandemic to improve our immunity. Next one is we have to follow different principles of training load also. Otherwise that will lead to negative effects also. And it is not possible to talk about the different principles, all the principles in front of you in the in this limited duration of time, I will discuss about only few. That is, we have to perform the activities continuously. We have to the follow, follow. We have to follow the principle of continuity. There should not be gap in between. We have to perform activities regularly without gap in between. Minimum of five days in a week, as suggested by eminent scholars from the field of physical education and sport, sports sciences. Next one is, we should also follow the principle of gradual increase. Then the question arises, what is the reason behind this? The reason is, the body for adaptation need the same type of schedule for a particular time. Otherwise, adaptation will not be there without adapting a particular load, we should not increase the load. Otherwise, that will lead to injury. And the main, that is the third principle that should be followed is, that is principle of individualization. Every individual is not having the same level of fitness. So according to the requirements of the body, the individual plans should be prepared for each and every individual as per the requirements. So one main question that arises in the mind of the individual that what type of activities should be performed? I am talking in front of you on the basis of a standardized literature. These are not my views. I am talking on the basis of standardized literature. So as per the literature, yoga is the easiest way to improve immunity in this pandemic situation. As we know that there are different types of yogs. As you will be agree with my comment that in the field of yoga, there is no standardization, but I'm talking in front of you on the basis of a standard literature. So in yoga, there are different limbs. Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyan and Samadhi. Out of all limbs, on which limb we should give stress in this pandemic situation. Before that, I would like to share a Sanskrit shlok in front of you. That shlok is from Isha Upanishad. And that shloka suits this pandemic situation. And this shloka from Isha Upanishad tells us about the significance of yoga. Shloka is Yoga 
it means the individual who develop their body by the help by the fire of yoga does not have illness old age or even death it means we can avoid illness by practicing yoga it has been mentioned in isha upanishad by the help of a shlok na tasya rogo na jara na mrtu praptasya yoga agnim shariram so different yogis different speakers from the field of yoga different authors from the field of yoga gave their comment about the significance of yoga i am quoting few on the basis of standardized literature in front of you manu gave the comment in relation to the significance of yoga according to manu yoga is a remedy against the evil tendencies of mind and sense organs before me the experts spoke that we should take care uh, care about our mental health also so in this comment that comment given by a great, great philosopher and great yogi that is yoga is a remedy against the evil tendencies of mind and sense organs it means we can overcome the evil tendencies of both our mind as well as sense organs by practicing yoga but if we see carefully this comment this comment is incomplete in sense manu described we can control the evil tendencies of mind and sense organs but he did not define what are the evil tendencies of mind and what are the evil tendencies of sense organs according to manu the evil tendencies of mind are only two that is love and hatred on the other hand the evil tendency of sense organ is only one the attraction of the individual towards external object all these three evil tendencies two belongs to mind and one belongs to sense organs these can be controlled by a single practice that is yoga as described by kuluka ji it means the comment given by kuluka ji was not a new comment that was the additional comment to the comment given by manu that was incomplete in sense next is i would like to share a comment given by the swatmarama in the field of yoga i hope you have heard, heard about the different literatures yog sutra by maharshi patanjali garand sahita by rishi garand ashtang yog by swami charandas and yog sutra by maharshi patanjali that i have explained out of all standard literature one is written by swatma rama ji that is hat yog pratipika the text is purely based on hat yog the forceful yog in the hat yog swatma rama ji described yog alone is sufficient to overcome the evil tendencies of mind and sense organs there is no need to do another type of practice it means this practice is complete in nature as per swatma rama one or two comments i would like to share with you since i am having very less time so that is given by maharshi patanjali we know that he was an extraordinary genius from the field of yoga maharshi patanjali gave a clear exposition about the spiritual development of the individual as per maharshi patanjali the spiritual development of the individual depends on two factors without attaining these two factors we cannot think about spirituality first one is the individual must be able to break the obstacle which is in between individual and spiritual light and the second required factor is the individual must be able to fix the wandering mind all these two factors which are required for spirituality can be attained by a single practice that is yogic practices it means in conclusion on the basis of the comment given by maharshi patanjali we may conclude that the yoga is a staircase in the spiritual development of the one more comment the last comment i would like to share with you by rishi swetashwar from swetashwar upanishad that we can control the defects of mind by practicing yoga it means nothing new that has been mentioned by manu also it means words are different in previously manu described we can control the evil tendencies of mind uh, shweta rishi shweta should describe we can control the defects of mind the meaning is more or less same so every individual wants to glorify our body 
but we do not remember about we forget about the different layers so we should have an idea about the different layers also as per yogic concepts there are three, three different layers we should develop all the body layers instead of only physical body and these layers are physical body astral body and causal body physical body means birth takes place development takes place stagnation takes place deterioration takes place and death takes place it means yes that is our physical body yes by practicing physical activities and by practicing yogic activities we can glorify our physical shed we can glorify our physical body but the remaining two bodies should also be developed second body is that is astral body the astral body is sub divided into three different layers that is pranic shat mental shat and intellectual shat pranic shat is connected to the physical body with the subtle thread when the thread is cut that departs our body that departs our physical body we should develop this pranic shat it means this is this is uh, this consists of nadis and nadis are micro vessels that where the prana flows and prana is that drop of cosmic consciousness that enters in body and we are alive so we should take care about our pranic shat and the important part is by the help of this pranic shat we feel cold heat hunger thirst we experience these by the help of our pranic shat so this should be perfect in nature next sub part of the second layer that is astral body is known as mental shat mental shat means that is on the basis of that we perform our day to day activities ki what we perform that is very jump in nature sometimes sometimes here sometimes sometimes there it is very jump in nature but the important part is we experience thought doubt exhilaration depression delusion by the help of this second sub layer of second body second layer that is astral body after that brief description of our mental shat i will discuss about the next shat next layer that is known as intellectual shat intellectual shat means that guides mental shat guide mental shat works as per the directions of mental shat it means everything depends on that mental shat but as per psychological concept our ego ego resides in our intellectual shat and the last body that is very important that is the most important that is causal body that is the seed body our karmas in the form of the sanskaras are stored in our causal body and the most important comment in my presentation is this that is the development of remaining two bodies the development of physical body and the development of astral body depends on this third body that is causal body that is a seed body that is like a seed and the blueprint the blueprint of our plant will depend on our seed it means our causal body we should take care about this and the meditation especially the last stage of yoga that is the raj yoga plays an important role to develop that remaining two layers that is astral body and causal body and next part is i would like to share an important concept in front of you about the open window theory previously i have discussed that what type of activity should be performed since our activity may be with high intensity our activity may be with moderate intensity our activity may be with low intensity in this pandemic situation the activity or physical activity any practice with low intensity has no effect and if we perform the any activity with high intensity in that case the open window occurs as per this open window theory that theory says that after high intensity of the intense training program the 2 to 72 hours are very crucial in nature our body becomes very sensitive to invading substances foreign materials so we should be careful it means it is suggested that we should not perform any activity with very high intensity or with with int intense exercises should be avoided 
it is suggested that the moderate intensity should be preferred if we perform any activity with moderate intensity the open window does not occur in in that case that has a positive effect on our leukocytes on our neutrophils on our basophils on our uh, eosinophils Chita? and these plays Chita? an important role on our immune system so we should take care about the intensity of the exercises as i have discussed Chita? during the discussion of training load that Chita? Yeah. Hello. So we should take care about the intensity. Intensity means speed of work done, as I have discussed during my explanation in the training load. And one more concept I would like to share with you that is the concept of glycogen lactic acid system. We know that the immediate source of energy is the phosphogen system that depends on ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and CP creatine phosphate. After that our glycogen lactic acid system works if we require energy it is a natural process since i am discussing i am sharing this uh, concept in front of you since this concept is associated with ki how we can delay the fatigue in this pandemic situation so in this glycogen lactic acid system it's a natural process each glycogen molecule is converted into two paracetamol acid molecules suppose let us take an example a hypothetical example if we are having suppose we are having 1000 molecules of glycogen these will be converted into 2 2000 molecules of pyruvic acid since we require energy and this natural process takes place and these pyruvic acid molecules enter into the cell and we know that in cell there are Uh, there is a mitochondria and in mitochondria there is oxygen and these pyruvic acid molecules react with oxygen and converted into energy and the energy is produced and we feel energetic and we rejuvenate we feel rejuvenate but in mitochondria since one pyruvic acid one glycogen molecule is converted into two pyruvic acid molecules the number of pyruvic acid molecules become very high so in this condition every pyruvic acid molecule is unable to get oxygen the pyruvic acid molecules which are unable to get the oxygen are converted into lactic acid and we feel fatigue so we can say that by practicing yoga especially by practicing pranayama all out of all the limbs that is yam niyam asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi if we opt only pranayama by practicing pranayama maybe ujjayi pranayama maybe anulom vilom pranayama maybe uh, bhastrika pranayama since there are different varieties of bhastrika pranayama so more oxygen can be supplied at tissue level it means we can delay the production of lactic acid since more amount of oxygen oxygen can be supplied to pyruvic acid it means in the simple words in the words of the layman we can say that by practicing pranayama by practicing yoga by practicing physical activities we can delay the fatigue for longer duration since more oxygen can be supplied at tissue level especially by practicing pranayama so in day to day life we should adopt minimum of one pranayama practice one from oxygen based pranayama one from carbon dioxide based pranayama since scientifically we can classify all pranayamas into two different categories some pranayamas are oxygen based and some pranayamas are carbon dioxide based it means we can say that the pranayamas having kumbhak in which we retain our breath comes under the category of carbon dioxide based pranayama since the amount of carbon dioxide increases in our body by practicing these types of pranayamas and the pranayama in which the we increase the breath rate especially in bhastrika that is known as oxygen based it means in blood during practicing this pranayama the amount of oxygen increases in my conclusion in the my last part of my presentation since dr benerji awarded me only 
30 minutes and I have taken more than 30 minutes till now. So the last part of my presentation is what type of yogic activity should be performed nowadays in this pandemic situation? That is the main important point. I have consulted several research studies published in refereed journals, published in Scopus index journals, published in Web of Science index journals, published in PubMed in index journals, and we know that PubMed is a reputed name in biomedical sciences. All these research studies says that by practicing yoga, the leukocytes, neutrophils, and basophils improves. And if these cells improve, that will improve our immunity. But the important point of discussion is ki what type of practice should be performed. It is suggested by the eminent scholars. It is su suggested by the scientists on the basis of experimental studies, on the basis of clinical studies that our training session, our session should include if we perform activity, from the field of yoga. So the session should consist of three different types of activities. We should include some asanas, maybe from standing position frame, maybe from prone lying position, maybe from supine lying position, maybe from sitting position. Only asanas are not sufficient to improve our immunity. Simultaneously with the asanas, we should include pranayama. We should, in, at least we should include one or two pranayama practices also. Together, that is asanas and pranayama also not sufficient to improve our immunity. If we want to improve our immunity, so we should include meditative practices also. So if we perform yogic, if we are preparing our yogic session, that should include three different types of practices, should include asana, should include pranayama and should include any meditation, maybe a sad yoga meditation, maybe pranadharana, maybe a vidharana, maybe a transcendental meditation, maybe a Sudarshan Kriya, etc. On the other hand, if our training session is based on physical activities, as I have explained earlier that we should take care about the intensity also. It means we should perform with moderate in intensity instead of high intensity and low in intensity. So, again, I express my sincere thanks to the organizers, especially to Dr. Benerji for inviting me to speak in front of you. I tried my level best to present information that suits this theme in this pandemic situation. Is wish Vyapi Mahamari me COVID 19 ki wish Vyapi Mahamari jiska samna ham kar rahe hai, hamari jivan shali, hamari khani ki adate. Joki Parivarti Ho Chuki hai, is Sabke Sandarb me Prayas Kiagaya hai, Ap Sabke Sam and Epasuti Karanaka, Ap Sabko Danevad. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Now, Dr. Mahesh, uh, Dr. Mahesh, please, yes, please ask the question if any. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I thank the organizer and uh, I also thank Dr. Rajiv Chaudhary, sir. Uh, professor from uh, Rani, I mean, uh, from, from Raipur. Sir, it was a wonderful session. And uh, with the permission of my chairperson, Dr. Lamlum Burel, sir, uh, with his permission and the uh, questions which are flashing on, uh, I think it's opportunity to ask uh, Rajiv, sir. Sir, there are four questions which have been asked by uh, the people who are observing this uh, session, but the maximum of the questions have already been answered by sir, but then I take this opportunity to re-ask this question. So first question is asked by Jerson Gracia. Gracia, uh, excuse me if I spell the names of, uh, or speak the names of the people uh, so the first question is, if you have no symptoms, can you still infect other people? Sir, over to you, sir. Yes, Rajiv. yes. Uh, clear, it, uh, it is uh, instructions has been issued by medical officials that, yes, uh, 
it is not necessary to have the symptoms of the COVID or the Corona. So you, you can infect others. You should take care only by uh, a, a particular test. We can find out yes, we are infected or not. Thank you very much, sir. The second question is asked by Bisujit Sharma. Uh, what kind of yogasana do a person having diabetes uh, for immune system boosting? Uh, in this question, there are two sub questions. In, in this question, there are two sub questions. Ki, first question is what type of uh, yoga should be performed to in, improve our immunity? And the second question, that is sub question, is ki, what type of yogic exercises should be performed to avoid diabetes or to rectify or to uh, cure diabetes? In relation to the first question, I have explained that as, as per the expert, our training schedule or our session or our yogic session should include three different types of practices. We should not depend only single practice. We should, we should not depend on asana only. We should not depend on pranayama only. We should not depend on asana only. As per the clinical studies, as per the experimental studies, if we perform all these three practices together, that plays a positive role on our immune system. In relation to the uh, second, as per some experts, it is suggested that to um, for diabetes or for uh, to control our glucose level, Mandukasana should be practiced. Uh, that is uh, practiced in kneeling position. Uh, we close our fist. We place both the fist on our um, abdomen lower abdomen and slightly we press the abdomen and we place our forehead on the surface and uh, care should be taken that there should not be any gap in between our hips and uh, uh, heels. Few more asanas are also suggested that is Ardha Pavan Mukta Asana that is uh, performed in a lying position. It means we have to bend the knee, we have to interlock our fingers, we have to uh, touch the knee by the help of our chin. And Poon Pawan Muktasana also we can perform with a single leg and we can perform with both the legs. These are the asanas which are suggested by uh, some scholars from the field of yoga, Maheji. Thank, thank you, sir. It was wonderful. Uh, again, uh, Suman Maite, Madam Suman Maite has asked, uh, which type of, Madam or sir, I don't know, I guess. please excuse me for that. Which type of asana and pranayama increase our immunity, particularly in this pandemic situation? Although you have already told, but again, uh, there's a question. Sir, please, how about you, sir? Asana has, uh, she can select as per her requirements, but more, uh, one comment I will uh, I would like to add, that is, I have, as I have explained that, there are two different types of pranayamas oxygen based and carbon dioxide based we can select any pranayama practice but there should be balance between oxygen based pranayamas and carbon dioxide based pranayamas we should not practice only oxygen based or we should not practice only carbon dioxide based there should be balance both the type of pranayamas has their own importance and we uh, she may prefer Bhastrika Pranayama, Anulom Vilom Pranayama with Kumbhaka. She may practice. Or uh, one more, but uh, Ujjayi Pranayama. Oh. Mahirji. Oh, sir, thank you, sir. Uh, although there are a uh, lot many questions coming up, thank but you. we'll take another uh, two, three questions. Thank you uh, much, much, thank sir. you. Oh, sir. Uh, over to Lamlum Burel. Over to Lamlum Burel. Yeah, Amit, uh, am I visible Lamlum, and audible? Please give your concluding. Am I visible and audible? Yes, Loon, you are visible yes, as yes, well yes, as yes. audible. Okay. Uh, my uh, sin yes. yeah, time is limited. So, the, the, I just want to brief it out. My sincere thanks to the organizers and especially to my friend Amit, batch of 1993 LNCP. And 
<laughs> it was a thank you for the opportunity for giving me to be the chairperson for this session. Our dear participants and organizers and learned resource person in relation to the topic, aspect and prospect of health and fitness during COVID-19, beside the wonderful and insightful presentation given by uh, my friend, and in fact, my guru in this profession, Dr. Rajiv Chaudhuri. Our highly esteemed speaker talks about the scientific and literature aspect. I just want to add two points into it. It will not take long. I want to put forward two, two points. Rather, it is a question to the professional in the field of physical education and sports. It is time to serious look into this pandemic, which have gifted us all this trouble, right? So the first thing I want to tell is the first point is, what positive contribution can we professional in the field of physical education have? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a give back time for the professional in the field of physical education. The question is how we are going to give back. And when you and I know that the best available option to fight this COVID-19 situation is to strengthening the immune system. And you and I also know that the best possible ways of strengthening the immunity system is to health and fitness. That is so much related to our profession. So uh, why not you and I saw the near and dear one, especially our family members first and our relative and after that, we extend this mission to the community at large by leaving with example. First, we have to show that we can be fit. That is the first thing we can do. This is, and let us ensure that to get ourselves back to the fitness days of our college. So I'm very sure during college, everyone is fit. So this is the time to get back to college days fitness. This way, community will be able to see us then they'll be able to learn something from us. And the second point briefly I want to tell quickly is, can we look this situation as a blessing in disguise professionally? I hope you understand what I mean. Can we look this pandemic situation as a blessing in disguise, a hidden blessing to the professional in the field of physical education and sports? This is my personal opinion. I just want to uh, explain briefly this one. One thing is very certain, as and when this pandemic situation left us, okay? When this pandemic COVID-19 gave us a break, the awareness level regarding the importance of our profession, that is physical education and sports in general, and personal health and fitness in particular, the awareness is going to be at its peak. Let me repeat, after this, pandemic situation give us a break. The individual importance given to individual and health and fitness and the awareness the people have regarding health and fitness is going to be at its peak. So the question is, can we utilize it as an opportunity to promote our field that is physical evidence, education and sports? My last concluding one is, this will depend upon you and I whether you want to use this, the freedom that is, or uh, the break that is going to be given by pandemic to our advantage will depend upon you and I. I mean, a realistic approach is required. If we can be slightly creative and innovative and started planning as a group or as an individual, how to then like I mentioned before, the awareness is going to be so big and I think it will be the best time to sell our professionals. This is what I want to tell briefly. Since we are going to move to the next session also, let me shorten my speech. Thank you once Thank again, you. Dr. Rajiv. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv Choudhury, Dr. Lamnon Buril, and Dr. Mahesh S. Ketmalis. Thank you very much. Now, I'll move to the next session. And the next session, the eminent speaker is Dr. V. Duraisamy.
डॉक्टर वी दुलाई स्वामी प्लीज अनम्यूट ओके नमस्ते 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 डॉक्टर वी दुलाई स्वामी इज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ योगा तमिलनाडु फिजिकल एजुकेशन एंड स्पोर्ट्स यूनिवर्सिटी एस डन बी एस सी इन फिजिकल एजुकेशन एम पी एस इन फिजिकल एजुकेशन एम फिल फिजिकल एजुकेशन पी जी डिप्लोमा इन योगा पी जी डिप्लोमा इन स्पोर्ट्स मैनेजमेंट एम एस सी योगा एम एस सी योगा थेरापी एम एस सी साइकोलॉजी एंड पी एच डी इन फिजिकल एजुकेशन स्पेशलाइजेशन इज योगा इज पास द यू सी टेस्ट एग्जाम वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द तमिलनाडु physical education and sports university very prestigious university she served as organizing secretary of two national level workshops and many articles are published in national and international journals i think 48 articles are published in issn and isbn national journal under his supervision eight scholars are there and already one scholar submitted his phd and mphil scholar 79 msc scholar is 248 very nice sir along with him our chairperson of the session is simoti firoza mugrelia she is a gold medalist in bp and mp from lncp gwalior outstanding sports person represented all india university in athletics presently working as director of sports st javier's college kolkata west bengal and the co chairperson is shrimati girija basu she has done bp mp from lnip gwalior presently working as assistant professor in physical education government physical education college for women hogli since 2000 Seven. Now I request Durai Sami sir to start your valuable lecture, sir. Please. Namaste, sir. Thank you so much for giving a great introduction about me. Uh, respected professors, sir, and the sports professionals, and uh, physical education professionals, and the dear participants. First of all, I thank uh, Dr. Banerjee Banerjee sir, giving a great opportunity to. Uh, select as a eminent uh, speaker in this session, as well as uh, who referred uh, Dr. George Sir from Bayeshi College of Physical Education. So let us start that. My uh, what I am going to speak that uh, is a yogic practices for stress management. So first one thing I can tell that the yogic practices for stress management. yoga is different yogic practices is different yogic practices is the angas of the yoga first one line in the one proverb i can start with that with the proverb if you practice yoga it means the yogic practices regularly you should practice automatically you should love yourself first love yourself love myself rightly balanced sir said that number of uh, physical education professionals and sports professors we should know about that suppose for example unable to sleep we should know about our health which system is not functioning properly what should i taken what wrong with me that is in the yogic practices one step it come up it realize your mind it realize yourself that's why i told if you practice yoga automatically you love yourself so i am going to talk about the current lifestyle of the common people because in india is having more than 50 percentage of the people are belongs to less than middle class people i can repeat that In India number of more than 130 crore of people is there. About 50 percentage of the peoples are I talk about the common people, less than middle class people. So, in that less than middle class peoples, 
90% of the people are not concentrate their health. It means they are not practicing either walking, jogging or yoga or some other physical activities. The maximum illness, maximum illness about that common people, I talk about the common people, maximum illness or Above 60 percentage because of the mind, not because of the body. This is that I want to another 40 minutes, 45 minutes. I'm going to engage with the uh, number of participants here. Generally, I'm taking the classes before that. I should tell that I'm going to engage you with your body, mind, as well as breath. But here is the online webinar. So I am going to engage with your mind as well as I try your breath. Without distress, I have to engage with you. Ma'am, please, ma'am, next one. Next slide, ma'am, please. Fine. Ah, okay, fine. Mind and life. I told that about 60 percentage of the Problem is uh, because of that related to the mind. I am going to talk about yogic practices and stress in the pandemic situations. Yogic practices, stress in the pandemic situations. I talk about the mind and life first. The mind is like a monkey. Not only the normal monkey, the mind is like a drunken monkey. You know that the monkey is not able to stand in one place. The same monkey, it drank, drink the alcohol. The scorpion bite the monkey. That monkey entered the one supermarket. What supermarket there? It then steals the supermarket. That is our mind. More than 1,000 students, I got given a great opportunity to take the classes of more than 1,000, 1,500 police professionals. I can control the mind of the police professionals, 1,500 people. It's easy to control the 1,000 people, but very much difficult to control myself. That's why we are telling that the great warrior, <coughs> the great warrior is the Alexander. The great warrior Alexander ruled the world. He ruled the world. The Mahavira Jain, we are telling the Mahavira Jain. In Tamil, we are telling Mahavira Alexander and Mahavira Jain. The Jain is more than Alexander because of the the Mahavira Jain ruled himself. That's why I'm telling that mind is like a monkey. That's why I told above 60% of the problem is related to the mind. Next is the toxins. Toxins are, toxins are like a poison. Each and every cell is having the toxins. What is the toxins? It's a waste product, undigestion product. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, taking the dinner. Immediately within half an hour, they are going to sleep. It's undigestion. That's why I'm telling the toxins are accumulating in your cells, whole body. It's like a poison. Generally, we are focusing the middle class, the normal people, common people. We should focus the digestive system and the respiratory system. It means the digestive system, it means uh, excretions, excretion of the waste part. Remaining everything, uh, we are focusing the uh, ultimate flow that uh, the all systems, we focus the all systems. The yoga is uh, very much a speciality. Comparing the other alternative medicine, yoga is a very much a speciality. Why? Because of the yoga only can balance the endocrine system and the nervous system. 
So that's why I told reminding every system is began this only digestive system and respiratory. Without I concentrate, without I regulate my body, I am unable to regulate my prana. Without control and regulate my prana, I am unable to regulate and control my mind. The first is the body. You should focus the body, remove the toxins. Then only you should go for the prana. Then only you can go for the mind. That's why the uh, Saint Padanchali rightly mentioned about that uh, the sixth, the seventh is the meditation. Seventh limb is the meditation. Sixth limb is the dharana. It means concentration. Sorry to say that uh, seventy percent of the work above the hip region. Da. Seventy percent. I now I am sitting on the chair. When I am sitting on the floor. Very rarely I am sitting on the floor. Not only I am common. Common people sit on the floor. One small example I share with that. Sorry to say that more than seventy percent of the people and the delivery that means the delivery la the pregnancy female delivery seventy percent of the people sit cesarean, not a normal delivery. Normal delivery. Above hip region only the work they are. And nowadays, some people say the work is the mind-related work. That's why the yoga is a specialty. Yoga shifts the breath in low the hair. That's why it's called modification of the mind. Ma'am, next one. Ma Animal characters. <clears throat> Above fifty percent of the people are animal characters. Very simple. We are telling that uh, who am I? That is yoga. Who am I? Now I am a research person. So my concentration is: I have to take. I give a lecturer in the proper manner. Proper manner means what? Each participant should understand. Fifty percent of the people sir, animal character means eh, between the four wall, between the four wall, you ask yourself, who am I? I am who? Maybe you know that all are psyche people, sir, including myself. All are psyche people. Sir. The percentage only differ. The percentage only differ. Ten percentage, or five percentage, or twenty percentage, or thirty IQ level. We are telling them thirty percentage, or forty percentage, or because of the food and lifestyle. I told fifty percentage of the people are animal character because of the food and lifestyle. What food is that? What do you mean by food? Sand related food. What do you mean by sand related food? There, I can tell one small example. In south southern region, Tamil Nadu means groundnut oil. In Kerala means coconut oil. North India means mustard oil. Da. Which is which food is we are cultivating in our places? That food is advisable for our health. Because of the food and the lifestyle, eh? now the everybody is want the instant benefit. Immediately I want, immediately I want. Not ready to wait. No patience, character. Not ready to wait. That's why first prayer I told you practice yoga. You love yourself. Eh? You realize yourself. Eh? Everybody's is not an instant. That is why. So time is very less. Stress the different. Sir, ma'am, please, ma'am, let before ma'am, ma'am, sir, please. Do. Okay, no issues. Okay. Ma'am, please, ma'am, before ma'am, it's a very important point, ma'am. Ma'am, before ma'am, previous slide, ma'am. Ma'am, previous slide, ma'am. Ah, yes. In UK, 
Eighty percent of the disease because of the depression. Eighty percent of the disease because of who is suffering depression. I told ego, unreal, no true love, no adjustment to all is nothing but uh, nothing but I, my mind, I, I only. Please note out that another ten years, our country is going to face a three issues, three issues. Please be aware of these three issues, my dear beloved friends. I give the I give the awareness of you. Cancer, psychological disorder, infertility, and impotency. Please aware of these three issues. There is a no permanent medicine for these three issues. Diabetic, we can continue. Hypertension, we can continue. Back pain, we can continue. But except to the cancer, psychological disorder, and infertility and impotency, these three is because of the less immunity power and the mind. This is only the reason. Ma'am, next one. Stress. Types of stress means uh, very simple definition. I can tell stress means uh, repetition of the thinking. Repetition of the thinking. Nothing, no, nothing. If I talk about the colloquial language, stress means again, 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 again. You will think various kinds of stress. I stress you stress. Scientifically, we can tell generally positive stress, negative stress, necessary stress, unnecessary stress, based stress. Positive stress, negative stress, necessary stress, unnecessary stress, and based stress. Everybody wants stress in the positive manner. In the positive manner. Indians are intellectual. Indians are intellectual because of our traditions. Our traditions, our lifestyle is related to overcome the stress. It improve our health. It improve our immunity power. Only one example I am telling. Our grandfather, our grandmother, any one day, any one day, they can sleep up to 10 o'clock morning. Any one day, they can sleep up to, today is government holiday. Today is Sunday. So I can sleep up to 10 o'clock. No. So they never overcome the, our traditions. So stress means a repetition of the thinking. It will affect our regular routine activities, routine work. What are the symptoms? Ma'am, next to that. So much of symptoms is there. General symptoms, I can tell. It disturb your prana. If you are having the stress, it disturb your prana. When you disturb your prana, finally it disturb your mind. This is the common symptoms of the stress. Emotional disturbances. What are the emotional disturbances? Sir, emotion is there. Sir, you are, you are teaching, you talk about the yogic practices. Yogic practices is nothing but uh, power of prayer, power of uttasana series, Surya Namaskar, Asana, Pranayama, Mudras, Bandhas, Shatkiriyas, Meditation, Relaxation and Prayer. Sir, kya relation, sir? Kya relation? Kya? Emotional me, yogic practice me, kya relation? Kya, sir, aap kya koi? One, one hour you are practicing yoga, how it 
how it balances the emotions india i told indians are intellectual indians are intellectual the spiritual quality the spiritual health can balance the emotions example i am telling that any one of our family members passed away about 60 years so 50 years so 70 years our grandfather or grandmother or any one of our family person person passed away how we are crying we can hit the face hit the chest and we are crying that i talk about the common people every emotions every stress are blast that i expressed my sadness i expressed my sadness my grandfather grandmother passed away i expressed my crying i am not controlled i am not hide my crying so the spiritual that when you are you are become a spiritual you are, you are having a spiritual quality definitely it emotions also it should balance in pranayam yogi breath aa u im a from the lower abdomen u from the chest to thoracic and im from the forehead if you chant a it destroy your fearness that's why i told <coughs> the child small kid when the kid fell down suddenly he make a sound a so when you practice such things a u im it's is nothing but om excess of the fear excess of the anger depression etc etc i given that emotional disturbances finally i only one thing i tell sense of insecurity it means a sense of insecurity means uh, i am unable to conscious about my work without senses ma'am next <coughs> i told uh, behavioral symptoms of the stress eating more or less sleeping etc etc eating more our life is like a nowadays struggled like we are going outside or etc etc it's a, it's a, so how can we change it's our lifestyle is like that without pre plan our office time is 10 o'clock means we when we are get ready for 8:30 or 9 o'clock so so we are what is that we restricted ourselves up to sorry 9 o'clock 10 o'clock after 10 o'clock it's a sleeping time night that time only we are taking food so when you are going to bed it late means automatically when you wake up also it late so everything is because of our lifestyle so that's why the stress so what are the symptoms simply i told repetition of the thinking repetition of the thinking here it's a common factors eating more uh, sleeping too much time etc etc intake of alcohol cigarette etc etc this is that it's a it's a common abnormal it's like that next time okay fine now i talk about the stress i told her. next what is yoga yoga who am i number of definitions many dimensions to join the body and mind huge huge work come to join the body and mind integrating the body and mind etc 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 i told already it's ultimate is spiritual yoga is ultimate spiritual the spiritual is nothing but balance the balance the endocrine system and nervous system 
தமிழ் ஒன் புரோவர் மிஸ்டர் கண்டவர் விண்டில்லை விண்டவர் கண்டில்லை இந்தியாக்கள் the child is unable to explain the happiness the two years kid unable to explain the happiness the same thing when you attain the blissful state you can't explain it means when you reach the samadhi stage you can't explain that blissful anandamaya gosha that's why i given that ultimate is the spiritual spiritual is nothing but to balance yoga means balanced everything is positive everything is negative no each all are positive ma'am next one what is not yoga so much of issues are going on there yoga it's related to the hindu religion only etc etc no absolutely no ma'am next one body work alone is not yoga body work alone it's a flexibility it's a physical activity difference between the loosening exercises <coughs> physical activity loosening exercises and yoga related loosening exercises it we are telling that shithili karna vyayama pavana muktasana serious normal physical activity movement eh? with the breath with the breath normal physical, physical activity means without breath so what i want to tell that body work alone is not a yoga i keep my right leg on the left shoulder i keep my left leg on my right shoulder that to only is not a yoga ma'am next ma'am please you know that ashtanga yoga ye himsa yoga you know that i am not discuss about much that ma'am next yes social behavior is the first limbs of yoga social behavior next is the self behavior that's why i told asana yogic practices asana pranayama it's a one of the angas of yoga in previous sessions was rightly told about the hatha yoga pratipika swat marama giranta samhita what they told about that here in saint padanchali also mention about that first thing is social behavior exactly i am telling i am a good husband of my wife ha huh? i am a good the son of my parents ha huh? i am a good father of my two daughters ha huh? i am the good teacher of my students ha huh? what about my karma what about my jnana etc so a uh, first thing is a social behavior how i behave to others it's like so it's a, it's a uh, basic only so the eight limbs of yoga ma'am next one yes perfect connection in yoga ma'am another thing <clears throat> ma'am please ah yes body breath and mind body breath and mind sir i am practicing yoga sir i am practicing yoga no abdomen nothing no it's a physical activity it's a physical activity i remove the toxins yogic practices is advisable for body for remove the toxins sir next breath prana the prana yogic practices for prana what it's a preparatory for mind conscious breath is conscious conscious of all action the third is the mind subconscious superconscious etc etc intellectual vingana maya gosha so 
my humble suggestion first regulate your body it means remove the toxins from your body through surya namaskar practices through asana practices then then only next you go for pranayam regulate and control the breath finally you can go for the mind <clears throat> this three is the perfect connection in yoga so in this in this session i want to tell that is surya namaskar <coughs> especially for body maybe a number of professors is there the surya namaskar only to activate the all chakras it improve the immunity power especially what we done the research in surya namaskar especially it's good for adolescence it means 12 years to 21 years mainly 12 years to 18 years it balances sex glands that age is the transfer age diversion age so surya namaskar is the advisable for that kind of people especially 9th standard 10th standard 11th standard 12th standard and under graduation students ma'am next one differences i told yoga yogic practices and yoga therapy the common people i practice yoga they are practicing sirasana i practice yoga i am they are practicing tadasana i am practicing yoga amit sir kitna minute baki hai 10 minute hai 10 minute cover it as quickly as possible sir again sir bolo sir cover it as as quickly as possible no. and differences of yoga yogic practices and yoga therapy yoga is nothing but who am i myself who yogic practices is a samangas it's like a surya namaskar asana pranayama mudras bandhas meditation what you are practicing in one hour that is a yogic practices yoga means how you are in your office how you are in your house etc etc that is who am i it's meaningful yoga therapy is one to one nothing but to one to one to appropriate person appropriate practices appropriate time and durations ma'am next one yes some practices i given here surya namaskar is advisable really number of i i attended as a therapist number of cases in psychological disorder and infertility impotency what i suggest what i given to my patients surya namaskar practices only i have given really it's amazing that such a we done the more than six research in surya namaskar okay next one some practices asana like that i given for not only for some normal mainly it's related to the digestive system and the respiratory system ma'am next one yes some tips in the pandemic situation some tips any practices also include with some breathing technique you can do like au yim or mantra chanting like that some breathing technique you can do the duration of the practices is minimum 20 minutes maximum as you like regularly in our student we are giving in saturday more than one and a half hour we are giving normal day for 40 to 60 minutes we are giving so i am taking the body's professional sir i am i i advise us my advice us is sir at least 5 minutes when you finish the path 5 minutes do utkatasan do mantra chanting then you can go for your work the ideal time is before breakfast or some of it professional is here after meals 3 hours it means after meals 9 o'clock i am taking breakfast 
you are having no time. One o'clock, in fact, it's nothing is wrong. There. Sir, please, next, ma'am, next, ma'am, ma'am, next. Ma it's a common uh, food, is the common, ma'am, next. Without uh, hungry, you should not take food. Uh, without hungry, that is that. Uh, it's a common thing, uh, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Next, ma'am. Is a common chew the food, their digestion starts in the mouth, etc. Et it's a normal eat slowly. Eat slowly is that you know that uh, uh, what to eat, vegetables, whole grain, etc. Uh, etc. Et Ma'am, next time. Mm -hmm. Time is lesser. Next time. Ma'am, uh, yes. Oil path. Weekly, once oil path is advisable, my dear. It balances the three doshas, vada, pitta, kaba. Hello, sir. Mm. Sir, sir, I can conclude, sir. I can ah, conclude, please, sir. Uh, Ma'am, next one. Ma'am, last one. Next one. Ma'am, next one. Ma'am, next one. Finally, one, one, uh, one uh, prescription sheet is there. I can share it. Next one. Next one. Is it scriptable? Yes, ma'am. Now the yogic development is like that. Like allopathy doctors, how they are giving the prescription to the patients. Like that, we are giving the yogic. Now, I've given the yoga therapy for stress management. These four are my PhD scholars. Yoga therapy for stress management. Finally, I conclude that uh, be real. Be real of your life. 365 days, you should practice yoga or walking or etc. Any other physical activity. And finally, conscious about your sleep. Again, I tell conscious about your sleep. Conscious about your dinner and conscious about your drinking of water. So, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Banerjee, sir, given the great opportunity. So, I'm unable to uh, fulfill that. Finally, without Guru in the pandemic situation, you can practice Surya Namaskar, Mantra chanting, and deep relaxation technique. This point I should insist that. You can, without Guru, sir, uh, how can we can go for Guru? Without Guru, you can practice Suni Namaskar, Mantra chanting, and a deep relaxation technique. Deep relaxation technique is you can lie down and just to put the, some music, spiritual music. You can. This is that. Thank you so much for giving a great opportunity. Thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now I ask uh, Girija Madam, please, question and answer session. Girija, madam, on your video, please. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yes, yes. You are audible as well as visible. Thank you, sir, uh, for this uh, wonderful and informative mm -hmm. session which you have given to us. There are so many comment, uh, comments in the chat box and everybody is saying this is a very good and informative session. Thank you for this, sir. One question is here, sir. Uh, Dipali Nigam, uh, please elaborate breathing technique. She's asking, please elaborate breathing technique, sir. Her question. Uh, ma'am, uh, initially, ma'am, I told that ah, oo, yim, ma'am. Yogic breathing. They are telling the yogic breath. Ah, oo, yim. They can practice initially. Then, uh, Nadi Shuddhi Pranayam or Shubhapurva Pranayam. It means alternative breath. That is advisable. Them. Remaining practices with the Guru only, they should practice that. Okay. Thank you, sir. One more, more question is there, sir. How can we reduce the anxiety level during this situation, pandemic situation? Ma'am, mantra chanting is advisable, ma'am. Mantra chanting advisable and a deep relaxation technique with the music is nothing but yoga nitra also advisable. So we are they are unable to go for the yoga centers, so they can put that 
music and uh, some spiritual music they can do the deep relaxation technique after the mantra chanting practices thank you girija madam uh, thank you sir uh, for uh, this wonderful session thank you piroza uh, madam please conclude the session yes so we'll just take a minute to conclude this session dr durai swami assistant professor department of yoga tnps you thank you so much for your very lucid and intellectual presentation i'm sure all our viewers have gained a, a great insight into the benefits of yoga and yogic practices and i'm sure people are going to implement the same during this pandemic period and also beyond your study has been very in depth and i'm sure you will leave uh, it has left us much food for thought and i'm sure uh, we will all agree and our viewers will also agree that the more control which we have over our mind and wherein we can translate this into our sound body and our sound physical and emotional well being is what we are really targeting in this so not only do we serve ourselves well by being fit and being uh, spiritually aware but we can also be an asset to our society which we live in because fitness and health is entirely the watchwords of today's day and age especially during this pandemic our immunity our health and all is foremost on our mind yoga is and its entirety and as we have correctly tried to explain to us is a very powerful and a very successful method of moving forward to a society and your inputs have justified the same and yoga which has had this roots in our own nation in our great nation and practitioners and pro people who promote the same in our country are doing a great job and i'm sure our viewers are going to promote the same and today the original and the most traditional methods of yoga which are practiced in our nation is what we need to take forward hundreds and thousands of people today are practicing yoga but are we practicing the correct and traditional methods of yoga what our ancestors have given down to us is what we need to promote and not the new economically viable um, avatars of yoga which uh, which we are seeing all over the world today so i uh, thank you so much dr durai swami and i thank our co chairperson dr girija also for being with us and thank you dr amit for giving us this opportunity to speak at this on this platform over to you thank, thank you, you dr v durai swami thank you sir thank you thank you thank dr v durai swami thank you uh, shrimati firoza mogralia and thanks to shrimati girija basu thank you sir thank, thank you, you. Sir. now we'll move to the session 3 and the topic will be covered in this session is a uh, physical fitness activity and covid 19 and in this session our eminent speaker is professor rakesh dube professor rakesh dube have 20 years of rich experience and with a solid commitment to education he had done bp mp and phd in physical education mba and diploma in sports management from sydney australia apart from this he had certificate course in yoga and physiotherapy from birla institute of medical science presently he is working as professor in department of sports pedagogy in lipaja university latvia europe before this he worked as professor in Haramaya University Ethiopia Africa for 5 years selected as associate professor in University of Venda South Africa and worked 17 years in Rajasthan Technical University Kota Rajasthan and lecturer in College of Physical Education Bhopal MP he presented several research papers in international and national conference and published several books and a number of research papers in the international journal he is a research paper reviewer of international journal of turkey greece and india and research guide in singhania university india and the chairperson of this session is dr satyan kumar katyan he has done bp mp mphil phd from lakshmibai national university of physical education he organized kbs national athletic meet sindhya public school athletic meet official in all india university athletic meet 1992 93 95 97 1999 at lnip gwalior 
and he represent the school college university in different games at state national and inter university level he is working as hod in kumari mayawati government post graduate college badlapur noy greater noida gautam buddh nagar and he is a son of late sri randava singh ex olympian welcome you sir and along with him the co chair person is Dr. Atanu Das, he also done his BP, MP, MPhil from LNIP Gwalior. He is a net qualified. He have done PhD from University of Badwan, and more than thirty paper published in reputed international and national journal. Now I request Dr. Dubey to deliver your valuable speech. Rakesh Dubey, sir. Please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes. You are audible. Yes, I am well Professor. Please. I am Professor Rakesh Dubey from Lepaya University, Latvia. First of all, I would like to thanks to the Professor Amit Banerjee and the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my views on physical fitness activity and COVID-19. The aim of this lecture is to educate the general. public about the physical activity and physical fitness with simple terminology to improve the immunity the covid-19 pandemic is a hard time all across the world worldwide social distancing policies are put into place restricting people people's daily life daily activities and worldwide plea from governments asking people to stay safe and stay at home this of course means that most people will spend much of their time at home these social distancing measures means that people have fewer opportunities to be physically active especially if activities such as walking or cycling as transportation or taking part in a laser activity example jogging walking going to gym are being restricted the impact of this physical inactivity may very likely to be seen in many areas such as health and social care of people all across the globe although these social distancing measures are important and needed now but our body still needs physical activity so before starting or, or going ahead i want to tell you that the aim of this lecture is to educate a general public so they should know that what is the importance of physical activity and expenditure and, and exercises during this pandemic period there are three key, three key points are there physical activity and exercises can be effective treatment strategies for symptoms of both depression and anxiety each day is a new opportunity to engage in physical activity and exercises that can bring short and long term benefits for mood sleep and physical health consistency and sustained motivation may be enhanced by peer support family support or electronic platform offering exercise programs so before before going ahead a layman he should understand what is the difference between physical activity and physical fitness in other lectures we were we were we were talking about the yoga and and different areas but here we are talking about the physical activity and physical fitness so activity is a bodily movement produced by skeletal muscle that results in an expenditure of exercise of energy while fitness is a measure of person's ability to move physically physical active activities that requires endurance strength and flexibility or in other words we can say that physical activity is something you do physical fitness is something you acquire a characteristic characteristics or an attribute one can achieve by being physically active and exercise as a structure and tends to have fitness as its goal now the question comes or a layman he he'll be confused about exercise and sports so exercise is a form of physical activity done primarily to improve one's health and fitness while sports is a complex institutionalized 
computative and these characteristics work against moderate ten rhythmic exercises before going going to any exercises or a physical uh, fitness training one should understand the difference between exercise and sports activity and fitness so now the common reason people are, are are not they don't want to do do exercises what are the common reasons why people are not doing exercises they have different excuse, excuses they said i don't have time for exercises i don't like the sweating i don't like sweat you know it looks silly it hurts me i don't know what to do it's not important so this is the aim of this lecture is to solve these questions when they say i don't know what to do we should this being a physical educationist being a sports person being a coach this is your duty to educate them what what they have to do and what is the importance of these these exercises so in front of them the question is this why we will do exercises why they will do exercises the exercises they helps to control weight they reduce feeling of depression and anxiety they help to build and maintain healthy bones muscles and joints reduce the risk of developing colon cancer they help to reduce blood pressure in people who already have high blood pressure causes the development of new blood vessels in the heart and other muscles enlarge the arteries that supplies blood to the heart it reduces these exercises reduces the risk of three leading uh, causes of death it is not visible hey, hello yes sir, can i hear you it is not visible it's okay it's okay sir, no problem is okay you want to see my ppt wait yes 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 wait 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 can you can can you see my ppt now hello yes sir yes sir thanks sir hello sir yes sir okay okay, thanks, okay. Sir. so, yes, sir, so yes, sir. Yeah, yeah yeah so it reduces so what what can exercise do for you it reduces the risk of three three leading causes of death that is heart disease strokes and cancers and the control control and prevent development of diseases enhance mental ability it improves the habit of increasing uh, energy level it lift it lift depression and health uh, manage stress it controls uh, sorry it controls weight improve uh, self images appearance and health now the first step for starting the exercises for a layman if you are a layman if you are a general public if you are a general man you have no idea about 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 the uh, the physical activity what will be your first step your first step is setting the goal what will motivate you think about your reason for exercising why you want to go for exercising why you want to do exercises this will be your first question before starting the goal are your goal important enough to keep you motivated for a longer time think short and short and long term aim how will you benefit from from your fitness plan day to day in one year in five year or in 10 years so setting a goal is a very important without aim nothing nothing can be can be done just going outside and going for a walk it have it have no use you know you have to prepare your goal what and why you are going to do exercises now before for a layman see again i am telling you this lecture is for a layman for a general public so before starting a layman if you are over 40 or have health problems health diseases high blood pressure diabetes obesity muscle or joint problems consult a physician before beginning the exercises without consulting a doctor if you are if you are having a problem different this type of diseases please this is my request to go and consult a doctor first learn as much as you can about exercise and reading and talking to other people now before starting what equipments and what safety measures you have to you have to uh, make there are this is buy appropriate shoes for different uh, sports for different uh, activities different shoes are there if you are going for running there are different shoes are there if you are going for for um, some game different shoes are there so appropriate shoes is must wear comfortable clothing then run and walk with a friend 
if you all the times this is a, a, a unwritten rule in sports that you should have your friend with you or a partner when you are doing any exercises or any any type of uh, walking or any exercises or a physical fitness um, activities now comes when we are when we are going ahead now the comes components of act activity program what you will do you should know when before before uh, going to the exercise what what will be your your program we divided physical fitness components in five parts but here i'm i'm explaining you three first is aerobic activity second is strength activity third is flexibility active training so you should understand before going what what is the meaning of these terms first and second what we will do in to improve these three components first is aerobic activity aerobic activity is a continuous movement that uses big muscle group and is performed at an intense intensity that causes your heart lungs and vascular systems to work harder than at rest cardio respiratory fitness is built through aerobic exercises aerobic exercises condition conditions and strengthen our heart respiratory system muscle and immune system now comes when you understand the meaning of aerobic exercises now comes what all are the aerobic exercises what all activities comes under aerobic aerobic exercises we divided these aerobic exercise into two parts one is outdoor outdoor activities another is indoor activities outdoor activities are walking jogging cycling swimming basketball soccer jumping rope these are the the outdoor activities which which we can do outside or in the in the ground while inside our house what we can do in um, in this uh, aerobic activity exercises these are treadmill machine we can run over treadmill stair climbing then rowing machines aerobics boxing these type of exercises or aerobic exercise we can do inside the house now second second uh, component comes this is about strength training strength training as a muscle works against resistance that improves strength and endurance strength allows us to move and endurance allows us to perform work over time now what all what all uh, components what all exercises comes on, comes in this strength training we divided this strength training into two parts was it exercise with with free weight second is exercises with body weight so with with free weight we use the dumbbell or bars with weight it involves balance and coordination useful for enhancing function in daily activities and recreational sports and provide a wide variety of exercises that works several group of muscles together while with body weight exercises the most convenient form of resistance exercises are push ups pull ups lunges or squat right these are the these are the form of strengthening exercises if you want to improve our strength or this component we have to do these exercises now comes flexibility exercises or a flexibility training what is flexibility is the ability to move a joint through its range of motion we lose its flexibility with disuse and aging what are the benefits decreases the chance of muscle injury soreness and pain it help prevent and reduce lower back pain improves joint health thigh muscle stress our joints how we will how we can improve improve our, our uh, flexibility by stretching or by yoga or by tai chi these are the training we can do it now question arises here now we understand these three components can that these three components we have to do in our exercises or with the help of these three we can improve our fitness but how much and how hard that means how much how much we will do and what will be what in other words what is the frequency and what is the duration what will be the duration frequency is 3 to 5 days per week it means if you are doing aerobic if you want to do aerobic exercises a minimum is if 3 days a week are necessary to reach most 
exercises goal and minimize health benefits second is strength training a minimum of 2 days per week flexibility exercises a minimum of 3 to 5 days per week this should be the frequency or uh, this much time you have to do it in a week now duration comes how much how much and how hard we will do so aerobics aerobics is 20 to 60 minutes of continuous aerobic activity while strength exercises one to three sets of 8 to 12 repetitions stretching exercises stretch stretch all muscle groups and hold positions for 10 to 30 minutes this uh, program you have to maintain or you have to do for improving aerobic exercises strength and flexibility exercises now comes the timing there are different questions the the people ask sir what are what are what time in the day is best you know what is what what can what what are, what i can eat before exercises should i exercise when i when i am sick these type of question comes usually people ask so the first question is what time of the day is best choose the most convenient time for your schedule choose a regular time the same time every day timing may depends on the activity you choose like if you if you want to go for a swimming morning and evening time is best and the another question people ask can i eat before exercises it can be best not to eat a meal for 2 hours beforehand be sure to drink plenty of water before and during exercises people are asking what uh, the question should i exercise when i when i'm sick no especially if you have fever if you are sick please please if you are sick please do not go for exercise or a running or a swimming whatever exercise you want to do now question comes conditioning a layman a, for for physical education is for a sportsman it's very easy We, this is common for us but for a layman they have no idea about the conditioning about the warm up warm up exercises what he will do every day what he is doing he is just going outside take a uh, round walking and then he come back um, um, to the house and then he is sitting back he should know what what warm up warm up exercises he have to do it so again we here we divide the physical components or the components physical into two parts health related components and uh, skill related components health related components are focus these these components focus on the general physical well being or overall health status of a person while skill related components are needed in training potential athletes and to help improve their skill in different sports so what all what all are uh, these health related components these are body composition cardiovascular endurance flexibility muscle endurance muscle strength while skill related components are agility balance coordination power power reaction time and speed these are good for sportsmen now conditioning or a warm up exercises why we will do warm up exercises what is warm up exercises is the simple question it is a preparatory physical activity that are considered low intensity exercises they are done before performing any physical fitness test or exercises to prepare your body and to avoid muscle cramps and injury now what all exercises we have to do in in warm up exercises or a conditioning exercises a layman if he if he have no idea about about these activities here i am telling you the simple exercises with a simple word with a simple terminology head bending go for up and down head bending head twisting shoulder rotation shoulder stretching elbow pull trunk twisting toe touching forward lunging hamstring stretching thigh stretching these are the these are the simple exercises again i'm i'm repeating the same exercises for warm up exercises head bending for a layman head twisting shoulder rotation shoulder stretching elbow pull trunk twisting toe touching forward lunging lunging hamstring stretching and thigh stretching these is a simple simple and simple with a simple terminology warm up exercises before starting any activity before starting any any uh, physical fitness activity one have to go for these warm up exercises now the question arises 
uh, 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 sir whether whether i am a i am a physically fit or not how how do i evaluate myself my fitness level what is the test of course he have, he have no idea about about the test how 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 he can evaluate by himself right so i will explain you here a very simple a very simple test he can evaluate by himself first is one mile run it is a popular test that is that assess cardiovascular endurance if you want to access if you want to assess your cardiovascular endurance just go for a one mile run if you can you are okay otherwise you have to Uh, concentrate on your cardiovascular endurance second is 1 minute push ups it is a test assess muscular fitness of the muscle in the upper tor torso region upper body region go for a 1 minute push ups you will understand if you can do it it's okay if you cannot you have to you are not physically fit we can say in other words third is 1 minute sit ups it is a test that times to assess the muscle fitness of the muscle in abdominal region then sit and reach test it is the test that evaluate the flexibility of the hip and hamstring areas then comes body mass index it is a widely acceptable excel tool to evaluate body composition then comes waist girth it is an important tool to assess the relative amount of fat in the abdominal region now these are the tests through which you can evaluate yourself you can you can test your your flexibility again again uh, i will explain these this test one minute run for cardiovascular endurance one minute push ups for muscular fitness of upper torso region one minute sit ups for a test for abdominal region One minute sit and reach. Sorry, sit and reach uh, for flexibility, body mass index for to evaluate the body composition, waist girth for fat and the abdominal region. You can check by yourself. No need to go anywhere. No need to 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 pay and you know um, take a help of anybody. But after this, people uh, are doing silly mistakes. Whenever people are going for exercises they are there are six mistakes what they are doing right the first mistake doing isolate exercises doing isolate exercises like bicep curls and triceps kickback will not get you any significant result if you want to go if you want to to reduce your weight if you want to go for exercise you know first of all you just go there and and doing uh, bicep tricep curls you will not get any a uh, significant result if you want to build lean muscle while burning fat you need to perform exercises that stimulates as many as muscles as possible you have to go you have to do a different set of exercises not only if you do only bicep tricep only uh, dumbbells or only uh, you know one or two group of muscles this will not going to uh, sign you will not get a significant results now comes workout with machines machines are alter the way your body naturally moves and restrict your range of motion this severely times severely limits your ability to fully active all of your muscle fibers that means less fat burning your your if you if you're doing uh, exercises with with the help of machine your 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 movement is similar right according to the machine while if you want to want a fast result it's critical that you incorporate exercises that allows your body to move naturally with full range of motion in the machine you you cannot uh, move by your you know will you have to move according to the machine right third mistake is doing long bouts of cardios you need to do cardio if you want to lose weight and burn fat but there are right way and a wrong way to do your cardio workouts 
now question arises sir what is right way and what is wrong way okay think about yourself what you are doing in your physical fitness exercises you are going out going for a walk for one hour half hour 2 km 3 km like this and this thing you are doing from last 6 months 8 months or a year but if the same thing you do on a treadmill just for 10 minutes the systematic programs are there you just fix the program and push the button everything is there in this 10 minutes and 10 minutes are more beneficial for you than your uh, half hour or one hour walking so the most effective way to pump up your cardio routines that will get you in such results in half the time of your regular cardio workouts workout causing unnecessary stress on your joints you are going people i have seen people are are going uh, for one hour walk two hour walk this the same thing even i have seen people from last 10 years they are using the same thus going there go for a two rounds 5 km they coming back 5 km come every day they are doing from last 10 years no changes um, are there in the body so better you have to uh, opt a particular uh, and a good program now comes doing crunches and sit ups to get six pack abs everybody wants to to make a six pack abs if you want to want six pack abs by doing traditional ab exercises like crunches and sit ups will not get you a six pack my dear friends your six packs are already there in your in your in your abdominal region everybody have six packs but but what is the reason the key of getting six pack abs is burning out that subborn layer of belly fat that hiding hiding them this fat is hiding this this fat is hiding is hiding your your abs abs are already there but instead of doing instead of reducing this fat you are going for crunches right so this is the um, next mistake we are doing now mistake number 5 repeating the same workout over and over i just now i have explained you repeating the same workout repeating the same workout over and over is the way to stop getting results after some time your body will not give you the result so your body has amazingly ability to adapt adapt the quality and when it does that when you hit the plateau and you stop making progress after reaching the plateau you will not get the benefit of these exercises just now i have explained you that from last 10 years i have seen people they are they are going for walk 2 km 3 km 5 km the same routine going there every every morning and they feel that yes i am doing the exercises no sir you have to you have to uh, um, um, think about other aspects also you have to change the schedule right then comes six doing long workouts longer workout do not equal better or faster results if you do long and long go you can go for every day you can go for a 20 uh, kilometers or like going walking going coming after some time there will not be any use when it comes to getting lean and fit your body responds to quality over quantity so these are the results or these are the exercises which i have mentioned you here i have touched the topic uh, about uh, aerobic activities about fitness about strength and about other components of of it you have to think over it before doing exercises and these are the exercises i have explained you here so it will be nice if you do this type of activities right thank you very much i shall remain grateful to you uh, to the organizers thank you very much sir thank you dr dubey now i request uh, dr atanu to ask the question okay thanks to sir for your very uh, for your very effective and fruitful presentation mm -hmm. which is very much useful to develop our knowledge in the field of sports and as well as fitness is he has delivered on the topic of physical fitness activity which is one of the most important aspect in daily life in this pandemic situations to make himself fit so i extend my heartiest gratitude to dr dubey sir 
as per the schedule now the session for the question answer the first question asked by samim ahmed that can you can you share the key of scoring of this test and how we calculate the fitness level so i request sir dubey sir for answering the question i know i know yes sir, again i am telling you sir for you i know that this lecture is for a layman i know that you 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 will ask the norms of this question this these test i have not mentioned any test of of these this is for 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 their own uh, um, they only can they this for for their own judgment you know when you when you talk about the norms when it, this is different so so many tests are there upper tests are there for physical fitness this is for us we can we can judge when you are taking the test but for them for a layman how he will how he will come to know about their fitness this is for them this is a self made test you can say that just for just i'm telling that just for go for a one minute do this things you will understand whether you are a physical fit or not no need to go for any test no need to go for no need to see any results no need to go for any norms just go sir this is for a layman just because of these tests and these things people are not uh, doing these things they, the the simple answers the simple question they said i don't know what to do so for a layman this is in the in the in the first sentence in the first slide i said my my uh, my uh, aim of this lecture is to educate a general public my this lecture is for a general public i know that okay. for you i you you know the answer i know the answer after test norms are there right this is the question yes uh, sir and one more questions uh -huh, then uh -huh. what should not be done while during this exercise what, what should, should not be should not be done during uh -huh. uh, while uh, while doing this some exercise we should not we should not do uh, over over exercises overload you know which will uh, uh, give the uh, which will which will you know hum um, jaise injury ho jaye we should not do these type of things we should not do over over activity right because all the programs are there in, like in in the treadmill if you are if you are uh, running over the treadmill you have to fix the program according to your ability or the capacity if my capacity is 10 minutes first program 1 we 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 will i will not go to the program 2 first adopt jitna adopt ho jaye aap aap kar lene ke kabil ho jaye then after you will go go for a, another uh, you know uh, program so we should not do over over uh, um, uh, cap capacity okay. right okay 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 thank you sir now i request uh, sotan dr sotan sir uh, chair person of this session to deliver the concluding remarks of this technical session sir please sir sir please uh, sir, mute dr huh. sotan okay 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 good afternoon all of you in this session professor dr rakesh dubey a uh, deliver a speech on the fitness he enlightened us on how fitness affects our uh, daily life he focused on how to improve over fitness through various type of exercise like aerobic exercise anaerobic exercise plyometric hit and how to improve the components of fitness like strength speed endurance flexibility agility and other parameters near about he cover all the aspects of the fitness cover all the parameters of the fitness cover all the variables which are related to the fitness he cover he talks all about the strategies how to develop a fitness to exercise in modern scenario he even speak on the bmi what is the role of bmi how it is to be attained at the top level fitness level emphasize on or to improve cardio and muscular strength in the last 
he just little bit focused on the various tests he responded well he responded very well whatever the question is asked by the anantu das ji he responded very well and i pray to the god in the near future we just meet like this and share our ideas on this platform and in the nutshell i just speak out on little bit on the fitness uh, if uh, you people are feeling convenient i just deliver little bit a few things in yes, english yes yes carry on carry on doctor carry on i just want to tell you फिटनेस जो है बड़ा ले मैन लैंग्वेज के अंदर बड़ा ही एक ऐसी टेक्नोलॉजी है जिसको लोग समझते नहीं है सिर्फ फिजिकल एजुकेशन एंड स्पोर्ट्स के लोग तो इसको समझ लेते हैं बट जो ले मैन लैंग्वेज है जो जनरल समाज है जो जनरल हमारी पॉपुलेशन है दे आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट एग्जैक्टली फिटनेस इज दे आर कंसिडरिंग फिटनेस इज जस्ट रिलेट टू द कार्डियो फिटनेस और द मस्कुलर फिटनेस apart from this they don't understand ki what fitness actually includes it fitness ko kaise improve kiya jata hai ye parameters unke liye simple se parameters hain if every day they run for the fitness uh, run so their fitness improves but fitness is a very wide term you have to cover each and every aspect of the fitness you have to cover each and every parameter of the fitness you have to see every variable of the fitness until unless you are not consciously focusing and concentrate on each and every variable you cannot fitness up to the top level after achieving or attaining your particular age like after 35 or after 45 year of the age very few people they are engaging themselves in any of the physical and the sports activity if you are engaging every day yourself in the physical and the sports activity your fitness level be on the peak level for this what i recommend you you have to follow the hit h double i t high intensity interval training if you are just performing the exercise with the high intensity interval training for 20 minutes or even i just tell you for the 15 minutes you will maintain a good fitness level second thing is try to aap apne sharir se har roz koshish kare thoda sa paseena zarur nikale agar aapke sharir se paseena nikalta hai to i am just telling you you जो बॉडी के अंदर टॉक्सिन हैं, वो सारे के सारे निकल जाते हैं। इफ यू आर एलिमिनेटिंग एंड एक्सक्रीटिंग आउट ऑल द टॉक्सिन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ स्वेटिंग यू विल नॉट सफर फ्रॉम एनी डिजीज और एनी डिफॉर्मिटी और एनी इंजरी और एनी टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम इवन योर स्ट्रेस लेवल गेट रिड्यूस once you are participating in any of the एक्सरसाइज और एनी फिजिकल एक्टिविटी और एनी रिक्रिएशनल स्पोर्ट्स और दी स्पोर्ट्स if you are engaging for 10 to 15 or 20 25 half an hour or hour special secretion of hormones is there if they are secreting if you are secreting proper amount of hormones in your body you will never feel sad you feel feel good aap jaise hi exercise karte hain aapke body ke andar aise kuch hormones secrete hote hain जो आपको फील गुड की अनुभूति कराते हैं लाइफ के अंदर जो ध्येय होता है हर एक आदमी का वो ध्येय ये होता है कि ही जस्ट लीव द लाइफ विद पीस एंड हैप्पीनेस। अल्टीमेट एम ऑफ लाइफ इज हैप्पीनेस एंड द पीस जब आप एक्सरसाइज करते हो तो जो सिक्रेशन ऑफ हार्मोन्स हैं उससे आपको हैप्पीनेस भी मिलती है और पीस भी मिलती है अगर आप अपने आप को एंगेज रखते हैं फॉर 20, 25 मिनट्स और हाफ एन आवर के लिए भी तो इस दौरान पे ये हार्मोन सिक्रेट होते हैं तो आप लोगों से अनुरोध करूंगा जितने भी आप लोगों के इंटरेक्शन में स्टूडेंट्स आते हैं या कोई भी समाज का कोई भी बुद्धिजीवी वर्ग का कोई व्यक्ति या पुरुष महिला जो भी आपके इंटरेक्शन में आते हैं जस्ट कन्विंस दैम जस्ट इंस्पायर दैम कि एवरी दे जस्ट स्पेंड 
वन आवर और हाफ एन आवर एट लीस्ट मिनिमम हाफ एन आवर मॉर्निंग एंड इन दी इवनिंग पार्टिसिपेट इन फिजिकल एजुकेशन एक्टिविटी प्ले सम गेम्स एंड द स्पोर्ट्स देर इज नो नीड टू डू समथिंग सेपरेटली फॉर द फिटनेस अगर आप ग्राउंड के ऊपर जाते हैं एवरी डे उससे भी फिटनेस मेंटेन हो जाएगी बट नियर अबाउट फिजिकल एजुकेशन प्रोफेशन पीपल दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू द फील्ड एंड दे आर एक्सपेक्टिंग द फिटनेस इम्प्रूव एट देयर होम दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल I think I am just taking uh, too much of the time. With this, I am just summing up. Thank you. Uh, requesting uh, Amit ji, please mic over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Professor Rakesh Dubey. Thank you, Dr. Satyendra Kumar Khatiyan ji, and thank you, Dr. Atunu Das. Thank you so much. Now we'll move to the next session, and in the next session, the topic is protein. facts and misconceptions and in this our eminent speaker is dr rakesh tomar is the faculty physical education department king for university of petroleum and minerals that is in saudi arabia and uh, extraordinary he is a extraordinary research scientist at the north west northwest university south africa former assistant director physical education rajiv gandhi central university arunachal pradesh former assistant professor elena ip gwalior he is having 20 years of teaching and research experience out of that 50 years in abroad visited more than 55 countries for conferences paper presentation and other activities and uh, he visited northwest university south africa visited wall state university indiana usa invited as visiting scholar west virginia university appointed as research fellow for academic society for south and north sports korea fellowship in applied nutrition fellowship in sports science certified peer reviewers by pavlons he awarded outstanding service at king for the university of petroleum and minerals saudi arabia awarded for passion and devotion by seventh asian conference on kinesiology korea awarded certificate of excellence for outstanding presentation by western society for kinesiology so many things are there she presented so many papers and evaluated 89 phd thesis received 90 research paper for international journals thank you so much sir a very big achievement you are having along with him the chairperson of this session is uh, lieutenant dr seema sharma kosik she is currently working as assistant professor in the department of physical education and sports at lakshmi bai college university of delhi and is also serving as associate ncc officer under 7 delhi girls battalion she has also served as director sports on deputation for the 19th commonwealth games 2010 she has completed bcom from lakshmi bai college pgdp ed from indira gandhi institute of physical education and sports science mp from lncp phd from cie university of delhi ma in yoga from from uttarakhand open university she cleared grf net in physical education and net in yoga she has won 30 medals for india including six gold three silver four bronze in different asian masters athletic championship at singapore japan chinese taipei and malaysia and represented india in the world master athletic championship at brazil and usa she is a black belt holder and national player of judo member of gold medal winning gymnast team gymnastics team of lncp in inter university and participated in all india inter university in yoga with her continued dedication she has been applauded 
with numerous awarded including best judo player best judo coach best young scientist best ano ncc in sw category dg commendation card for meritorious service in ncc best physical education teacher in india international research scholarship at glasgow scotland and best paper award at vienna austria dr shima has co-authored five books in the field of physical education and has more than 30 research papers articles published to her credit in this session our co-chairperson is dr sumal roy he has done bp mp mphil phd bp mp mphil from lnip golier and phd from vishwavarthi his specialized area are track and field and exercise physiology presently working as an assistant professor and head department of physical education chatra ramai pandit mahavidyalay bakura is the member of west bengal school syllabus committee is a qualified fto in athletics nine publication in various journals presented paper in various national and international seminars now i request dr rakesh tamar to present your valuable speech regarding this webinar thank you so dr. much and doctor please thank you so much sir thank you so much sir dr amit banerjee ji and yes. uh, thank you for inviting me for, for this wonderful event and i am glad that i am here you know and i can see that you have started dot on time so this <laughs> speech you know you know how well I was not present throughout the session, but I can assume that everything has gone very well. Yes, yes, everything is okay. Well, and I should also keep that commitment to finish my time in exact thirty minutes, which is allotted to me. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, you know, uh, once again, my you know, uh, my heartfelt greetings to all the dignitaries, all the learned you know members who are present you know here you know in the webinar, and a very good afternoon and very warm welcome to all the participants who are who are listening to this lecture. so quickly let me just uh, uh, share my screen with you uh, without wasting much time and thank you so much amit ji you know for adjusting my time on my request that because i was not available earlier time so that your cooperation is really you know appreciated welcome sir yeah so uh, i'll be presenting on uh, on protein you know i will be discussing about some facts and misconceptions we all know that protein is such a fascinating nutrient you know and everybody wants to know more about protein especially you know uh, especially the youth and especially the people who are going to the gym who are exercising they want to know more and more about the proteins and of course and there is a misconception there are so many misconceptions about this nutrient basically and we generally feel that protein is required only if you go to the gym and if you if you are a bodybuilder or if you are a young and you are enthusiastic exercising but a protein is required for every person especially if you are old when you age the requirements of proteins increases so uh, it is it is very important and it is very important to clear certain myths you know uh, around this uh, uh, nutrient so let me just try my level best to you know cover in uh, in the best possible way uh first of all what is protein in the human body proteins are part of every cell and tissue including our muscles we know that our muscles is a protein and we know that in our heart also you know our heart muscle your cardiac muscles they are also part of the protein right so our bodies are constantly recycling proteins on a daily basis the proteins that we eat in our diet can be used to replace broken down proteins in order to maintain the balance so that's a just a basic outline for the protein i will not go in detail now protein can be found in relatively high concentrations in the following foods of course you can get protein in many other sources but we uh, we should know know that which are the sources which are rich in you know in, in the protein so basically these sources are known to many of us like the meat poultry and fish the legumes legumes are you know if you are a, a vegetarian then legumes are very important for you like dry beans peas lentils they are all good source of proteins the tofu is another you know good source of protein if you are you know if you don't eat you know a non vegetarian meal eggs nuts all the nuts all forms of nuts and seeds again are good source of proteins 
and of course the milk we we you know if of course if you are a vegan you don't go for a milk but if you are a vegetarian means if you you can take milk because milk is a animal product so milk is also another good form of uh, a good source of protein and all the milk products basically they contain good protein and other than that there are grains some vegetables and some fruits can also provide smaller amounts of protein relative to the other sources so as we age we need to increase our protein intake as this and this is very important you know especially for the old people that we keep our protein you know uh, intake you know or requirement according to the you know rda guidelines and people who exercise regularly also need to eat more protein than the recommended daily intake but here the, there is a uh, okay before i go further let me just you know give you some practical protein equivalents in the common foods like you know it's sometime becomes difficult for you to find okay how much protein if i have taken a one a one glass of milk how much protein did i get so that's you know it's become difficult for a normal person to calculate how much protein he has taken i'm just giving here some equivalents like for example a one cup of a milk you know has around 8 grams of protein so one cup means we can say roughly 200 ml you know uh, maybe plus minus 10 20 ml you can have in it one cup of soya milk has about 7 grams of protein one egg a normal egg you know which is of a normal size not very small not very large has around 6 grams of protein then 85 gram piece of a meat will give you around 21 grams of protein and one cup of dry beans you know will give you around 16 grams of protein and if you have a like yogurt or curd like a 200 gram container it gives you around 11 grams of protein so these are some like you know common foods you know by which you can and normally we eat these foods you know in our you know our daily you know daily daily diet basically so you can get some idea how much protein you are taking every day now there is a misguided message you know which is prevalent you know in our community in in you know people around us that if you want to build muscles eat lot of protein so it's okay you have to eat protein but it's not exactly true the truth is that it's the weight training exercises such as lifting heavy weight and other resistance training exercises that builds your strength builds and strengthen your muscles not just eating the excess protein so i'm here i wrote here not eating excess protein so you should not be taking the excess protein we will discuss later on what is how much is excess protein and how much protein actually you need so if you consume more protein than what you need you will simply burn that extra protein as a fuel it will not be utilized for building your muscles so if you take the excess protein you are just burning that protein as a fuel source so there is a confusion that what is the best diet for building your muscles so basically when you work out in the you know in the like in the gym you hear you know like even i hear when when i when, you know when i go to the gym uh, the students they come to me and they ask me teacher tomorrow uh, i am i am starting my gym activity from tomorrow i want to go to the gym i want to lift weight do weight training from tomorrow okay please tell me uh, what should i eat yeah, can a teacher can i can i buy this supplement can i take the protein powders you see this is the uh, mindset even before you start your normal general weight training you are thinking about the protein you are thinking about the protein supplements so uh, this is a misconception that okay as soon as you start exercising in the gym you need more protein but it is not like that basically you know the carbohydrate rich grains fruits and vegetables are indeed the best foundation for every type of training program so whatever training you do whether you are in a gym or you are doing a cardio or you are doing a long distance running or whatever it is the carbohydrate rich grains they are the base like foundation for every type of training even bodybuilders need carbohydrate based diet because carbohydrate is stored in a muscle for energy and you cannot lift weights and demand a lot from your workout sessions if your muscles are carbohydrate depleted so if you do if you are if you are lacking in carbohydrate how will you lift the weight on that day that moment so at that moment you need so carbohydrates are the foundation for every type of you know training program so protein based diets which are low in carbohydrate provide inadequate muscle fuel for you to perform the hard exercise required to build your potential so even if you are if your diet is you know low in carbohydrate then the protein available in your body will be used as a fuel and it cannot be used for the muscle building so you need to have adequate carbohydrate so that your protein can be used you know for the purpose you are taking it 
So what are the requirements of the protein? So there is no scientific evidence to suggest that protein exceeding two grams per kg will provide an additional advantage. So if you are, if you are 70 kilo and you are taking more than 140 gram of protein in a day, so there is no additional advantage as, as per the research. Of course, when we, when we talk about the scientific, you know, we talk about the research, there are many things which are commercially available. So commercial advertised things are different, which is available in various gyms and fitness centers. But we'll go here by the knowledge which is based on research papers, you know, and which is available in various books. So which generally differs from what is available, you know, commercially, you know, you know uh, to us. So there is no evidence uh, that taking a protein supplement on top of an adequate diet will enhance muscle strength or size. So this again, you know, has been, you know, suggested, you know, in a research by Mr. You know, Heskin, you know, and, you know, uh, the advantage of getting protein from natural food is that natural foods contain protein the way nature intended, as well as yet unknown bioactive, bioactive compounds that might influence the muscle growth. It means, you know, when you take the protein in the form of a natural food through the natural foods, it's not only you get the protein, but at the same time you get many unknown bioactive compounds, which still are not discovered. So supplements are never, uh, you know, you can say, uh, you know, uh, can replace the natural foods for the source of a protein. So we should always focus more on the natural foods where you get, you know, many unknown bioactive compounds. And, and the physics of these bodybuilders, when we talk about it, it is not because of the excessively high amount of protein they take, rather it is because of the intense training. It's the training which builds your muscles, it's not the protein. Of course, protein you need, you need to supplement your body with required energy and with required nutrients, but it's actually the main is your intense training. So your focus should be on training, not on, on, on taking the excessive proteins. So bodybuilders work incredibly hard. They prefer a high protein diet because protein not only build and protects their muscles, but also keep them from feeling hungry when they are cutting on calories. And that's why, you know, you know, uh, they do so. So they have their different agenda because of the specificity of the sports. So the lean protein is harder to over consume. Now, these are some of the protein recommendations. And uh, I think those who are interested, you can take a screenshot of this. So if you are a sedentary, you know, adult, you are not doing any exercise, no activity, then you need only 0.8 grams of protein per kg of your body weight. Okay. And if you are some recreational exerciser, you do some, you know, occasional running or you do some exercise, do go to the gym, then you need from 1.1 to 1.6. That's the range, you know, for the protein requirement for you. And you can, uh, likewise, you can see there are different rates for different class of people, but the maximum is upper limit for adult is two grams per kg of your body weight. So you should not exceed the, you know, the consumption of protein in a day more than two grams per kg of your body weight. That's what you need maximum. So whatever level you are playing. Okay. So, uh, okay, this example, I will not go because it is, uh, so it, we can say that if you are a 64 kg endurance athlete if, and you, you do lo long distance training, then you may need around say 84 gram of protein in a day. So if you are 70 kilo, then you may require say around 90 or 95 grams of protein in a day. So which generally can be fulfilled you know, uh, these diets can be fulfilled by your, you know, your natural food. So an easier way, the easy way to assess whether you are getting adequate food or not is that, you know, uh, uh, adequate protein in your diet is to use the rule of thumb. That is enjoy your serving of protein rich foods at every meal plus two cups of milk. Just add, you know, two cups of milk over your protein rich food and, you know, you will definitely meet the requirements of your daily protein. And if you are like, if you are a novice bodybuilder or if you are a growing teenager, you are doing some excessive exercises, just add another two cup of milk. So there is no requirement of supplements at all. You can get all these requirements very easily fulfilled because 140 gram of protein in a day, you can easily meet. And 140 is a maximum. You don't need 140, you need something around 100 kilo. If you are a 70 kilo you know, uh, individual, you need maximum 100 or 120, not more than that. So you can fulfill that requirement easily, you know, through your natural food, just by adding the two cups of milk, you know, or another two cups of milk, you can, you know, easily fulfill that requirement. So if you think that you need supplements that advertise better, because what we, what are, what's the supplement? Because supplements are very attractive. They have very nice, you know, you know, 
fascinating you know advertisement they write something on their boxes and that these canes and you get attracted so uh, so so you have to think again before you get attracted to you know these supplements in an overall well balanced diet engineered proteins that is you know this supplements offers no advantages over standard protein rich foods so there is no advantage at all you know of these engineered you know proteins over the standard protein rich foods now these are some of the sources from where you can you can you can get the protein and i think this will also help you to find you know that how much protein you have taken so most of the sources like animal source and plant uh, plant sources are covered here and otherwise nowadays it's not very difficult you just google it you know and you you write what food you eating and you will get all composition you know that how much carb it has how much you know you know even if you are eating a traditional food nowadays there are so many apps you know Uh, fit, fitness apps are there which can give you quite accurate you know description about your food you know you know how much you know, especially distribution of the nutrient in that food in in respect of carbohydrate protein or fat even the vitamins also so it's very easy to find out you know how much what how much quantity you have taken in a day now uh, you have a daily need for protein that's you have to understand that you need a daily you you require protein every day it's not that you if in a week uh, on a, on a two or three days you take good protein rich food and a three four days you don't take so it will help you no you need you have a daily need for a protein so this you have to understand and this is a truth basically for optimal muscle building eat 20 to 25 grams of protein at each meal again this is one big question you know and one uh, you know uh, big misconception you can say uh, the wrong way of eating food we normally think that okay i can eat you know a protein rich food in the in my in my dinner and i can fulfill the demand for the whole day no that's not true you have to take the protein in each meal and that's why you see that for optimal muscle building eat 20 to 25 grams of protein at each meal and snack and before the bed so you have a continuous supply of amino acids to help build your muscles it's not that you just eat in a day you take the whole 100 gram in one time no so you have to distribute that requirement throughout your day so this is in contrast to a standard pattern of having very little protein at the breakfast normally our breakfast is very high in carbohydrates and we take little protein so we must balance that also and lunch you know we just again we don't take and then we go for a huge you know like you know steak for dinner where we get you know our most of the proteins so if you fill your stomach with too much protein you won't be fueling your muscles with carbohydrate so that's again so too much protein is not good for you your body can use now this is very important this is you know i'm quoting uh, you know uh, from a research paper your body can use only 20 to 25 grams of protein at one time so if you are taking a 100 gram protein you know in your dinner 70 gram will go waste it will not be of any use so that's why i said you need to have a continuous supply of protein to your to your muscles throughout the day not just at one meal so that means that if you eat 240 gram of chicken breast for example which can give you a 70 gram of protein in in your dinner so you will burn less than half of that as a you know uh, you know uh, uh, you know or, or it will be it will be stored in a fat or it will burn you know use as a calorie you know of that protein so plus if you haven't eaten much protein at breakfast or lunch thinking that you have high protein dinner will you know will compensate for your lack of protein earlier in a day so you have to think again with that strategy you have to change your strategy for that so protein breakdowns into the urea a waste product eliminated in the urine so anyone even if you don't follow the guidelines because we have some guidelines but who follows there were so many people who does not follow and we know that those people who follow you know who go with these supplements you know with others many types of supplements they suffer later on you know and there is always a consequences for not following the guidelines so even if you are not following it please take extra fluids so if you are taking the excess protein you should always drink the extra fluids now the need for protein is actually a need for amino acids so we we basically take protein because we want to have you know the certain amino acid this 21 amino acids so all proteins are made up of amino acids that are that your body needs to build so these are 21 amino acids and every protein in your body is made up of some combination of them so your body can make some amino acids itself but eight of them you know like nine for children they are called the essential ones 
So to date, no scientific evidence indicates that individual amino acids have a bodybuilding effect. So taking extra branch chain amino acids such as the last doses of you know, uh, ornithine or agonine will not make your muscles bigger or stronger. So your body needs all the amino acids to make new muscles, not just one specific. So the natural food is very important. Natural food provides the proper balance of all the amino acids. And that's why I'm personally always, you know, against amino, against, you know, the supplements. I never recommend anyone who comes to me that you should go for a supplement because we can very easily fulfill the demand of protein through our natural foods. And I have done when, even when I was training, uh, you know, in the gym also, I have, I have did it, you know, and I have developed a good muscles, you know, with just with the help of the natural, natural vegetable proteins, you can do that. Now, protein and vegetarian. Uh, this is again, uh, okay, okay, before that, I want to just here uh, take you back, you know, to, uh, to this slide uh, before I go further. You have to, as you can see that your body can use only 20 to 25 grams of protein at one time. So it means that if you are taking the extra proteins, it will not be of any use to you. So, uh, that's why the limit is also there, you know, up to like two grams of protein per kg of body weight. So you have to limit your protein intake to just 20 to 25 grams, you know, not more than that at one time. And that's why when you, when you take these supplements, when you go for these protein powders and you go for these protein shakes and all, I, I see many people, many youngsters, they are in the gym and they have some bottles in their hand, something in their hand, even during the workouts, they, they are taking these things. So they are, so we have to, you know, advise them, you have to educate them, it is not required at all, basically. So, and because if you take more than 20 grams at one time, it will not be of any use, you know, to your body. Body will be using it only as a source of the fuel and there can be a negative effects on your, on your kidneys, on your excretory system, basically. Okay, so moving on to the protein and vegetarian. Uh, a plant-based plant diet tends to have a more fiber, of course, you know, I'm not advocating which diet is better, the uh, uh, protein, a plant-based or animal-based, but a plant-based diet have more fiber, they have less saturated fat and cholesterol and more phytochemicals, you know, active compounds that are health protective. So you can get adequate protein to support your sports program by you know, if you are a, you know, a vegetarian by including the kidney beans, you know, basically chickpeas, peanut, butter, tofu, nuts, you know, you know, in the paneer, if you are in Indian context, we say, and other forms of a plant protein in each meal. So dairy foods are a great way to add extra protein. So for, for all the veggies, you know, the dairy foods are a very good source of protein, although they have been given a bad, you know, uh, rap because they are high in saturated fat, but still, their recent studies have failed to find a connection between a dairy fat, heart disease and stroke, regardless of the milk fat levels, you know. So still, you know, even many people say that the milk, you know, they have a lot of milk has a lot of fat and we should not consume milk, but still the, the studies in this area is still not very conclusive, okay. The protein in the rice, in the beans, in the pastas, in the lentils, in the nuts, fruits, vegetables, and other plant foods are incomplete because they have low levels of essential amino acids. So why we say that sometimes people say that, you know, the animal protein is better than the plant to plant based protein. It is because that these are, they don't, in a means they're incomplete in certain amino acids. So important that's why for the vegetarian is that they should eat a variety of foods. So it means it does not mean that it is no uh, means you cannot compensate it. So you can always do you know or you can always compensate it by eating a variety of foods to get a variety of amino acids that combine with incomplete proteins to make them complete. So even the vegetarians, you know, if you you you, you can so so the important for them is to eat different types of lentils, different types of nuts, you know, so that you can get all the amino acids, you know, and, and make them complete. Now the vegetarians who drink milk can easily do this by adding milk or dairy products to the each meal. So you can always, you know, increase or you can balance the demand of your protein by just adding, you know, milk. Of course, not all vegetarian meals, though vegans, those who are vegans, they don't, you know, uh, drink milk. So they can, they can add, you know, more source for the plant-based proteins. But vegetarians who, who, who drink milk, they can always increase that quantity. Like the vegans, especially the vegans, the strict vegetarians who eat no dairy egg food, so they 
needs to be consistently eat a variety of foods. So try the following combinations like the grains plus beans or legumes such as rice, legumes means all, all kinds of lentils, you know, beans, it, it can even include in that, such as rice, beans, bread, and split pea, uh, peas, you know, the soup, tofu, brown rice, corn, corn is also, you know, good source of protein, you know, and the kidney beans. So you can just try these combinations, then you can add the legume plus seeds such as chickpeas, you know, the sesame seeds, and add soy milk. If you, if you don't uh, go for a dairy milk, you are a strict vegan, you know, and you, you don't go for, a, and then you can add a soy milk. So uh, products to any meal, you know, uh, that can boost the protein value, such as, you know, uh, you know the, the cereal the, and the soy milk and the baked potatoes also a good source, you know, in some way, and the Greeks or soy yogurt. So athletes who choose to eat a vegan diet will hurt their ability to perform well. So this is again a misconception, it's a myth that it's not, it's not true actually. So vegans who eat only plant foods can meet their protein needs by eating a variety of plants, as I said. So it can be easily met. So this is a complete myth. So hence vegans need to consume generous portion of plant protein. So, but they have to eat like a more, the, the consumption increases because to, they have to compensate, you know, you know, for the low density of protein that you know these plant-based uh, proteins offered. Then protein supplements are so popular they must be better than the real foods. I have discussed, and this is again a myth. It's a very you know it's a, it's a big myth, and this is it's only because you know by advertising protein supplement industry has convinced many athletes that their protein products will build bigger muscle, but this is not actually true. So the protein supplements. You know, basically when you take the protein supplement, there's no guesswork, you know, okay, how much protein you are taking and it makes your like eating easier, your calculations easier. That's why we go for the easy things. Otherwise they offer no added advantage. Now the nutrient timing is very important when you should take this protein. So rather than focusing on eating a large amount of protein, they, you know, uh, it is recommended that you pay attention to when you eat protein. So consume high quality protein with all the essential amino acids, you know, like for example, milk, yogurt, or your chickens and all in proximity to the exercise, followed by a protein containing meals and in an even, and that to be in an even distribution throughout the day. So that is very important. Close proximity to exercise and followed by a protein containing meals in yeah, right. even yeah, right. the day. Right. So when the amino acids in the blood are above normal and the muscles take up you know, more of these building blocks, this enhances muscle growth. And thus eating several protein containing meals and snacks is preferable, you know, than eating one big dinner at the end of the day. Now, what you should eat, I will just have two more slides. Uh, what you should eat before weight training by eating protein along with the carbohydrate in your pre-exercise snack, you will start to digest the protein into amino acids, which can be consumed by muscles during and after the exercise. So pre-exercise protein can also reduce the muscle breakdown that happens during your exercise. So whether or not this translates into the bigger muscle has yet to be determined, but it is certain, it certainly won't hurt you. And what should you eat after the weight training? So the glycogen, we know that after, after you any exercise program, the glycogen stores are reduced. Cortisol and other hormones that break down the muscles are very high after the training. So the muscle damage that occurred during exercise that causes inflammation and amino acid glutamine that provides fuel for the immune system is also diminished. So if you just drink water, you will miss the 45 minute post exercise window, which is very important. This, uh, this, this exercise window is very important for nourishing, repairing and building of your muscles. So you eat a carbohydrate protein combination, eat a carbohydrate protein combination as soon as tolerable to you after the exercise program. So this is very important. And I think with this, I would like to conclude my presentation here. Thank you so much for giving a patience hearing. And thank you so much the chairperson of this session, Dr. Seema Koshik, Madam Ji, and Dr. Roy for chairing my session. I am honored that you are here, you know, uh, chairing my session. Over to the organizers for further questions. Thank you, Tomar Ji. Uh, now you, I request uh, Dr. Sumal Roy. For thank, the you, thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor uh, Rakesh Tomar sir. His excellent, 
informative speech has enriched our knowledge. He has elaborately discussed on protein, its fact and misconception by his attractive delivering style. So once again, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks and sincere gratitude to Dr. Tomar sir for his nice and innovative presentation. Thanks a lot, sir. Now the session is allotted for brief introduction. Uh, many questions are there, uh, but due to the time limitation, one or two questions uh, are to be asked. Uh, Jarson Gracias asking that, how effective is good hygiene in slowing down the spread of coronavirus? Sir, please, <laughs> so much, sir. Anyway, this is uh, not part of my presentation, but of course, the hygiene is always important for your health. Whether it's a coronavirus or no coronavirus, you know, the hygiene is the most important aspect. So if you you clean yourself, you 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 stay away from the bacteria and viruses. Of course, it will it will help. But here, I won't like to add here because this is very easy to understand. But important thing is that exercise. The exercise is very important to keep yourself, you know, like prevented, like less chances of getting affected by the coronavirus. So exercise is very important. Hygiene is of course there, but you need to do proper exercise and you, you need to eat you know, your proper food, proper diet so that you can increase the level of your immunity. And this can actually help you, know, uh, you to fight effectively with the coronavirus. Of course, uh, you have to follow all the precautions given by the governments in this regard. So I don't want to drill much on that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now the second question is asked by Hani Hari. How much protein is to be taken for a gym going person? Sir, yeah, this is important question. I think I have covered that in my lecture, but just yeah. you know, recall it again. So if uh, there is a range for if you are if you are a, if you are going to gym, uh, it is recommended that you can take a protein within the range of 1.1 gram per kg to 1.6 gram per kg of your body weight. So there is a range. So there is no fix. Okay, 1.1.2. So you can take, if you take 15, 20 grams extra, does not matter much, but you should not go more than 1.6. If you are a very serious professional bodybuilder, then you can go up to maximum two grams per kg of your body weight. Otherwise, 1.1 to 1.5 for you should be okay. You know, if you're adult, you know, to meet your daily protein requirements, you know, uh, for, for these high intensity exercises. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for this active, nice interactive session. And thank you for your valuable word. Thank you much. And now I request Dr. Shima Kaushik, Madam, Assistant Professor, Department of Physical Education, Lakshmi College, Delhi University, uh, Chairperson of this last technical session to deliver a concluding remark on this entire session. Madam, please. Unmute, unmute. Dr. Shima, please unmute. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, you are audible now. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sumalia. A very good evening uh, to all of you. Uh, it was really an excellent presentation by Dr. Rakesh Tomar on protein in uh, this today's last session of international webinar. Uh, Dr. Rakesh Tomar, who is an ambassador of fitness by himself, and uh, it, it's my privilege to listen to him as uh, we, we were together uh, doing PhD under the same guy. Uh, Dr. Tomar enlightened us by providing uh, data-based factual information actually about protein, myths and facts about it, and a very, very simple way of calculating our own requirement of protein. Dear listener, we all know that protein is an important and very common part of our life. And we also know that these are the essential nutrients for the human body, consider the block, building blocks of body tissue, and they can also serve as a fuel source. We can find protein throughout the body, in muscles, bone, whether it is a skin, hair, or virtually every other body part of tissue. It makes up that enzyme that power makes. 
और राहुल टेन डॉ टेन टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम नेटवर्क डॉक्टर सिमा हेलो डॉक्टर सिमा हेलो हेलो ऑल हर बाय इट्स अ नेटवर्क इशू Inform her by phone. Should I wait or proceed? Okay, it's a technical problem, and uh, phone him, phone him, phone, phone to her. हाँ डिसकनेक्ट हो गया मैं प्रोसीड कर रहा हूँ ठीक है कोई बात नहीं हाँ 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 अभी यहाँ थोड़ा सा चुनावी जस्ट बंद हुआ अभी ठीक है प्रोसीड कर रहा हूँ मैं प्लीज हाँ ओके हाँ लॉग इन बाद में कर लेना दो मिनट बाद में से ये कर देता हूँ ठीक है कर लेना तुम लॉग इन करो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं करो uh due to network problem uh, she is actually not able to log in again it takes time so i uh, thank you dr rakesh tomar dr shima kosik and dr sumal roy thank you so much for this session thank you so much now i uh, proceed to the uh, valedictory ceremony and in this uh, ceremony our guest of honor is Dr. M K Singh. Dr. M K Singh has done B P, M P, M P, and P H D from L N C P Gwalior, and uh, he is having the U G C Net certificate course in yoga from Lonawala, Pune. He is the former H O D Department of Physical Education, C S J M University, Kanpur, former H O D School of Law. Guru Gasidas Central University, Bilaspur, is registered in charge at LNIP Gwalior. Is a professor and head Department of Sports Psychology, LNIP Gwalior. More than 50 research papers in international and national journal are published. More than 35 papers presented at international and national level at conference and seminars. Many other academic and administrative experiences at university level. is having he guided four phd scholars sir i welcome you in thank the valedictory you. ceremony thank you thank you and, so much and i request you sir to deliver your valuable speech regarding this webinar mk sir please uh, thank you thank you mg thank you thank you so much uh, very good evening and namaskar to all of you aap sabhi ko namaskar the chief patron of this international uh, webinar sri kalipoda mandal ji the patron of this uh, uh, seminar dr santanu kumar bose ji all the members of the advisory board dr amit banerji dr kishor mukopadhyay dr krishnendu bandhu and of course the organizing secretary of this international seminar sri tapan pramak ji pramik ji first of all uh, a big namaskar to all of you thank you so much for inviting me as a guest of honor for this special program and before i should go ahead i should tell you very frankly the topic you have chosen is absolutely very correct in the present scenario and now the people has realized the importance of health and physical fitness how important it is in this pandemic situation the topic is aspects of aspects and prospects of health and fitness 
during and post covid 19 yes this topic is very much very much important for each and every individual earlier the concept was very unknown to everyone that how fitness is important for every everybody earlier the people used to think that if you talk about fitness it is associated with only those persons who are either either a player or those who are a sportsman but now in this pandemic this covid 19 situation the people of the world the people of the india they have realized how important health is for them and for their family members so this is a very good topic no doubt in that and the important thing is that the people has realized the physical fitness is the basic of everything if fitness is there everything can be done the life is very simple the life is very beautiful only when you are fit and you are having a good health and without physical activities without any activities in your life to simply do the work at from home as it it was a, a practice since last almost 6 6 months that we have to work from home and still there are some people they are working from their home itself now you can understand how important fitness is there people who are working from home they are getting frustrated they are getting very bored they are thinking that the life has completely stopped so fitness is very important and fitness can be done only when you are taking a good diet and when you are involved yourself in different kind of physical activities then only fitness is developed and the important thing when you talk about fitness the fitness is of different kind no doubt in that when you talk about health and fitness it is not only physical activity it is not a component of only fitness of physical it's not a physical fitness there are emotional fitness there are psychological fitness there are so many parameters of fitness and all the parameters of fitness are directly associated with physical fitness if you are physically fit everything can be fit all the other aspects of the fitness can be done very nicely and you can have a very beautiful and a very healthy life in your lifestyle so i congratulate this team especially amit ji who has invited me to be a chief guest of this program uh, for this uh, or this kind of organization amit ji i really appreciate that this topic is so much suitable for everybody the nation has realized earlier the people have not realized people used to say when the people talk about physical fitness when people talk about the fitness they think oh this is a work of a only physical educationist or a player it is not a topic of us now the general people of the country the general people of the world has realized how important fitness is how important health is and they realized when they came back to home when they have been stuck at home and they are not allowed to go out that time they have realized that no fitness cannot be achieved by simply remaining at home fitness can be achieved only when you will do activity yes at home also there are many options you do those do that exercises and you can keep maintain your fitness i just listened to the uh, uh, presentation given just now by mr tomar he has given a very wonderful presentation i really appreciate him he has given a good idea good knowledge about uh, uh health and about the nutrition especially about the protein good enough that's a very good presentation i like it okay i, I was just listening to him very minority i observe all the topics he has discussed it was a very appreciable the thing is that hello am i audible amit ji yes 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 you are audible uh, amit ji if yes. if you are thinking that i am taking lot of time you can tell me i will no 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 you, you uh, carry on please uh, the thing is that the people has realized now the importance of fitness and that's the important concept as a physical educationist as a man of physical education this is our responsibility to make the people realize how important fitness is and how important health is health and fitness is a broader concept it is very difficult to make them understand at a time to make them understand we have to take lot of time and we can make them understand by our own attempt if you will attempt to explain them if, if you will attempt to make them understand definitely the people will come to know they will understand the fact anyhow the my words are repeating hello amit ji no 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 it's repeating eco eco is coming that's it wonderful wonderful okay so just just a minute just a minute. Okay, over to you. Answer, please. Ah, so I was talking about the fitness. I told fitness is a very important concept of every every individual. Earlier, it was 
restricted to only the men of physical education and their players now the general people have also realized how important the fitness is the only Absolutely. thing is that do by arranging this kind of conferences and seminars and webinars you can make the people aware about the fitness and you can make the people aware about the health and i really appreciate once again to all of you especially the organizing committee i appreciate all the speakers that they have given their best and they have given a good knowledge to the nation and abroad i would like to thank all the participants who has participated in this program i would like to thank all the chairpersons co-chairpersons and especially the organizing team for organizing this kind of program because this is the right platform by which you can make everybody understand about the fitness and the health so with this i would like to conclude and thank you so much for inviting me once again i thank the entire team of the organizing committee for this wonderful organization thank you thank you thank you so much thank you so much you all you too sir thank you thank you so much uh, now i request dr kishor mukhopadhyay is the associate professor in physical education Hello. union christian training college barampur west bengal please give your concluding remarks hello ah uh, yes you are audible yes yeah, audible. yes the whole session we have uh, respected uh, professor dr uh, dr mk singh was registrar and head of the department sports psychology lnit gwalior dr debak prasad sahu physical education foundation of india secretary of the mal chapter mr tapos pramanik faculty shampu siddheshwari mahavidyalay first of all i express my gratitude and sincere thanks to include me in this uh, international webinar as a concluding speaker so we have uh, the title of the webinar wa uh, was uh, aspects and prospects of health and fitness during the post covid 19 here uh, four speakers are there in this technical session the first speaker was dr rajiv choudhury and he delivered a very good nice uh, presentation uh, and he uh, told that we can uh, develop our immunity so far as immunity is concerned in this covid 19 period uh, in two ways either in the exercise and if you want to do the exercise if you want to carry out the exercise schedule we should uh, perform the exercise in a um, uh, moderate intensity manner in other way we can also develop the intensity um, uh, immunity also by asanas pranayama and meditation these these three important aspects of eight limbs of yoga uh, prescribed by mohanshi patanjali we should follow uh, now nowadays to develop our immunity to develop our fitness to develop our health and well being our ne next speaker was dr v vinayasami and his topic was yogic uh, practices of stress management during this pandemic uh, situation we are all inside the room and we are getting very little, little scope to move here and there so we are always in a insecure way and we are always uh, feeling in a stress now how yoga is helpful for the uh, um, uh, stress the, uh, from his discussion we have uh, we come to we can know the modification of mind if I, first of all we have to modify our mind for modifying our mind to practice regular yogic activities for that first of all we have to love ourselves stress is a repeated thinking according to him there are various forms of stress and body mind and breath these three things are uh, associated with each other and surya namaskar uh, to elevate to sensitize the chakras the immunity and to sensitize the immunity uh, important aspect uh, according to him uh, now uh, uh, and our third speaker was dr uh, professor uh, rakesh dubey and his topic was physical fitness activity and covid 19 total, totally entirely different thing although his uh, um, uh, deliberation was very simple and his deliberation was to educate the community not for the physical education uh, personnel not for the uh, sports personnel only his deliberation is concentrated to educate the community to build a good nation and for that he prescribed some sort of um, uh, exercise please and he passed exactly the the goal setting when section of the component only he can uh, he include three component aerobic component strength and flexibility these three component he included in the exercise schedule and this aerobic can be uh, of outdoor activity or indoor activity and exercise, strength exercise can be performed with the help of external external weight or without the help of external weight that means that means with the help of uh, 
according to him we can come to know very clearly and the last of all the, our last speaker uh, was dr rakesh tomar he delivered a nice topic different type of topics protein facts and uh, misconception although we have all are facing uh, facing this type of problem those who are going to the gym those who are going to the gym and performing some kind of strength training activity to build body they expected to get more uh, protein they are taking more protein the more protein they rather they are detrimental for health also so uh, for performing any kind of uh, strength training we should require uh, adequate yes adequate vegetarian diet these essential so for the have a mixed or blended diet of diet everything will be there mixed a mixed diet will, uh, diet will be there and in case of non vegetarian diet oh is is essential uh, amino acid so they according to video to record korte ho to the research is that record korte hai ni they are giving the 20 gram recommended amount somebody is giving the 1 gram per kg of body weight daily recommended amount amount so as per the um, dr tomar we should not get 1.6 gram per kg body weight uh, uh, protein per kg body weight so protein requirement must be distributed and one more important thing is that the protein requirement should be distributed in such a way that it that uh, the source of amino acid can be supplied throughout the day so extra fluid we should take because we are taking protein we should take extra fluid to outlet the ammonia or urea the last of all uh, i thus i want to conclude with a team of the webinar is highly satisfied and it is well accepted by everybody uh, and let let us think, i think this the pandemic situation is more or less or to some extent beneficial physical education is and the sports personal because of the uh, knowledge about the few, what is fitness what is how to maintain the fitness let us conclude Acti activity is the basis of life we have to recognize it further okay thank you now i request dr devaprasad sahu associate professor and head department of physical education mohishadal girls college and the secretary physical education foundation of india west bengal chapter to give the vote of thanks dr sahu please good afternoon everybody it is my immense pleasure for me being as a part of this international webinar aspect and prospect of health and fitness during the covid post 19 organized by IQSC Sampur Siddhi Sri Mahavidyalaya in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India PFI West Bengal being as a secretary PFI West Bengal chapter first of all my sincere gratitude to Dr Sampur Kumar Mitra principal Sampur Siddhi Sri Mahavidyalaya also patron of this international webinar and with Kalipada Mondal MLA and president of this college who is also chief patron of this webinar for collaborating pepi and fit india my sincere thanks to dr r n de chief guest as well as a director of school education netaji subhas open university west bengal for his valuable speech which must enlighten us i am also thanks to dr ashim kumar bose guest of honor in this webinar and also former principal pggi pe banipur west bengal for his innovative and encouragement encourageable speech which is also help to motivate to enrich our profession my special thanks to george abraham principal ymc college of physical education chennai 
for his valuable speech and also guest of honor in this international webinar. And convey my best regards and wishes to Dr. Sudhar Sambhishas, Associate Professor Vishwa Bharati and special guest of this webinar. I am very much thankful to and my best regards to Dr. Pijus Jain, special guest in this international webinar and National Secretary, PEFI, for his valuable administrative speech. I am very glad to all members of advisory board for their valuable guidance to make this webinar in a gala success. They are Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay, Associate Professor in Physical Education, UCTC Bahurampur, Dr. Amit Banaji, Assistant Professor in Physical Education, PGGI PE Banipur, and Dr. Krishnan Pradhan, Associate Professor in Physical Education, Gorbeta College. My sincere thanks to all advisory board. My heartily thanks to Dr. Rajiv Sudhi, Professor in Physical Education, Dean Student Welfare, DSW, Head, School of Studies in Law, Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University, Raipur, Chhattisgarh, and keynote speaker of this first technical session for his innovative speech entitled on Aspect and Prospect of Health and Fitness During and Post COVID-19. My heart felt thanks to Dr. Buril, Associate Professor in Physical Education, SAI, LNCPE, Tribandam, Kerala, and Chairman of this first technical session for his valuable presentation. I am very much thankful Dr. Mohesh Khedmalis, Associate Professor in Physical Education, Vishwa Bharati, and Co-Chairperson in this first technical session of this international webinar. I convey much gratitude to Dr. V. Durasamy, Assistant Professor, Department of Yoga, Tamil Nadu Physical Education and Sports University, Chennai, and eminent speaker of this second technical session for his informative speech entitled on Yogic Practices for Stress Management. Shemuti Firuja Mugrelia, Director of School, Director of Sports, St. Javier's College, Kolkata, and Mr. L. Shemuti Girija Basu, Assistant Professor in Physical Education, GPECW Hogli, for their valuable speech in second technical session. My sincere thanks to Professor Rakesh Dube, Faculty, Department of Pedagogy, Live Peja University and eminent speaker of this third technical session for his informative speech entitled on physical fitness activity and COVID-19. My heartily thanks to Dr. Satyendra Kumar Khatiyan, HOD Physical Education, Kumari Mayabuti Government PG College, Badulpur UP, and chairperson of this third technical session for his valuable presentation and Dr. Atanu Das, Assistant Professor in Physical Education, Ravindra Mohabiddalai Hugli, West Bengal, and Co-Chairperson of this third technical session of this webinar. My heartily thanks to Rakesh Dube, sorry, Ra Rakesh Tomar, Faculty, Kingford University of Petroleum and Minerals, Saudi Arabia, and eminent speaker of this fourth technical session for his valuable speech entitled on protein facts and misconceptions. My special thanks to Seema Sharma Koshi, Assistant Professor in Physical Education, Luxembourg College, Inner City of Delhi, and Chairperson of this fourth technical session for his valuable presentation. And Dr. Kumal Roy, Assistant Professor and HOD, Department of Physical Education, Chatra Ramai Pondit Mohabiddalai Bakura, West Bengal, and co-chairperson of this webinar. We have with us Professor Dr. M. K. Singh, registered LNIPE Gwalior and HOD Department of Sports Psychology, also guest of honor in this international webinar since long time. My sincere thanks to him. Lastly, but not in the least, my heartfelt thanks to Sitapus Pramani, faculty of Sampur Siddheswari Mahavidyalaya and Organizing Secretary of this webinar for his wholehearted cooperation among all personalities who are making this webinar in Galatasaray. Once again, thank you to all. Thank you.
thank you thank you sir thank okay. you one and all thank you so much thank you for your cooperation and your help thank you thank you thank you so much sir have a good health sir thank you thank you sir.